you know, thanks for what you do with your podcast and all the rest. Uh, you're doing a great job. Hope everybody keeps tuning in. You get a lot of good info, a lot of insights, understandings of how to get strong, how to stay strong, how to use your strength. You do a great job, dude. <laughs> you make things better than they are in real life, I think. Yeah. If you don't follow Massonomics, y'all do it. Social media, uh, website, everything. Massonomics. Yeah. Welcome, everyone, for episode 395 of the Massonomics Podcast. We are the lifting podcast about nothing. That's what they call us. At least that's what they say. That's what they say. That's what we say. We recorded live from multiple corners of South Dakota, the best Dakota. My name is Tanner. And my name is Tommy. All right. <laughs> we are on the road to 400 officially then, huh, too? We're just, uh, after this one, five short episodes out. Damn. Yeah, that's, uh, I kind of forget about that. You know, the milestones, they all just start to roll together after a while. They all start to be the same thing, but 400 does feel like a big one. It's starting to feel like we cannot hold anything back now at this point in time. I mean, we're in the final stretch here. We got to give it all we got. You know who else can't hold anything back? The Strength Co. They haven't, and they can't, and they won't. That's why they've made the best iron Olympic barbell plates in the marketplace. They're made in America. They have a beautiful, stunning black e-coat finish. That finish not only looks great, it lasts. We have uh, many sets of these plates in Massonomics Gym, and they, damn it, they might look better than the day we got them new even. That's how good they look. I just think, I just think every time I look at them, they, they're, somehow they're aging, they're, they're Benjamin buttoning it. Where they, the longer we have them, the better they look. The younger they're going they get. in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> so these plates, damn it, these plates just look turning good. Into little baby plates right in front of yeah. our eyes. <laughs> the hundreds turned into one point two fives. It's not exactly what I was hoping for, but but they it's look what good. Got. They look good doing it. Yes, yes. Uh, so go check them out. They're accurate, made in America, beautiful plates. They're the go-to plates of Massonomics Gym. You can check those out along with their bumper plates, collars, barbells, everything else they've got at thestrength.co. And, wow, I, I should really pull up the ad script here so I know what, uh, what to read. And today's show is also brought to you by Texas Power Bars. Buddy Caps first started lifting weights in the late 60s and began powerlifting in the mid-70s. At the time, he was working for Image Barbell Building Gym Equipment. Around 1976, a local machine shop started making Olympic bars for them, calling it the Image Bar. In 1977, Image Barbell became Champion Barbell. It was then that Buddy started looking at the bars with an intent of changing them for the better. Fast forward to today, and Buddy's passion, drive, and purpose now has a greater mission. He has set out to make the greatest bars in powerlifting and has now unleashed the 29mm Texas Power Bar on the world. It's strong as a house with the best knurling, and it's maintenance-free. Soon, hundreds of state, national, international, and world powerlifting records will be set on the 29mm Texas Power Bar. To learn more and buy one of those brand spanking new bars for yourself, visit texaspowerbars.com. Texas Power Bars, I just used one of those today, the 29mm variety. It's hot. It's what everyone wants nowadays. It is. It's what's in vogue. Also in vogue is the Massonomics podcast, and lucky, luckily for all of you, that's what you're listening to right now. And we do have a plethora of topics to run down in this week's episode. A real laundry list of things you could say. Yeah, we do have a laundry list. Uh, as far as in the lifting world... Yeah, we'll we'll get saw, that stuff out of the way right away, right? Yeah, yeah we got to <laughs> sweep this wi- lifting stuff out, out of the way. We, don't, we won't want to spend too much time on actual lifting talk, but I did see that Iron Bibby rebroke the log press world record at 230 kilograms. This is one I'm surprised. You, I saw you put the note in there. Uh, I'm kind of surprised this has not ran across my my feed in any way yet. Usually I, I feel like every time there's a log press record being broken, I always see that get mentioned quite a bit, but I have not seen this one yet. Yeah, 507 pounds roughly. I think that that is what that comes out to. And I think it was 229, so he chipped it, mm. so to speak. And that was at, uh, I don't know, one of those uh, European Giants Live 
okay. sort of shows, sort of sh- sort of show things, and it's a he European didn't compete thing. in. Yeah, it's a European thing. Driving on the wrong side of the road, yeah. measuring things in odd units. Uh, but it is rebroken, and yeah, he's really good at log press. He's 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 kind of the king at the. Say he's that a bit of a specialist. Press, I guess. Yeah, yeah, he's he's. He's the king, and he's always a guy that'd be interesting. I want to see what he could do at World's Strongest Man, and kind of like every year he's uh, signed up for it and going to be mm-hmm. one of the people, and then for whatever reason he Something can't. Something happens, yeah. Yeah, it sucks. an injury or he can't travel or whatever. So hopefully would like to see him compete in a full competition against the best of the best. And I guess we never talked about it, though, but Thor is coming back. Uh, you know, I, we actually don't think we've mentioned this at all. I think yeah, I it probably think so. came out around when we were traveling and stuff. We never really got to it. But Thor has announced he's coming back. He is going to compete at the Arnold. Will be oh, he is we're the, in, okay. I didn't know. Yeah, when we're <laughs> yeah when we're uh, when we're in Columbus this March, which we've been working on a lot, working on Arnold stuff actually as we speak. But when we're there, he'll be competing uh, in the Arnold Strongman Classic. So that'll be interesting to that, see. Uh, that's uh, that's a win for everyone. He drives. He puts butts in the seats, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. So that'll be uh that'll be a fun one. Then you've got a few things in there. Should we crack into a crispy cold boy before we get to our next um, thing we want to talk about? Yes, we should. And now that you say that, you I'm, don't have I'm, a I'm going cold into boy, full panic you? mode because I know uh, I had a drink somewhere. And it's uh, that I, meme of pan- I, panic. Yes, and isn't actually, panic the, the crazier part is if you uh, you can't really see, but I'm in a completely empty room, so. Um, I, I could have swore oh, it was here with me. Actually, before we, yeah, before we uh, even get to anything else, that's that's the that's it's not an elephant in the room because there's not anything in the room. The ele- elephant in the room is the lack of things in the room. So yeah, new. This is a new studio officially. Then right, it is officially a new studio. I mean, the, there is no studio behind me. It is purely an empty room at the moment. This will uh, this will over time believe it or not this thing was the lowest one of the lowest priorities in the moving project i know it's crazy but um yeah the studio will be a work in progress over time but for right now we got uh we got a purple neon light going on but uh <laughs> someone said you're pretty in pink i am, made a pretty in pink meme. it's purple oh, and then not pink it's i see purple. yeah i yeah i see someone uh uh posted prints there too so <laughs> yeah uh, uh yeah so you moved then I right moved you, and damn is moving it's moving i will say Moving across town is significantly easier than moving to a different across portion state. of a state. Yeah. When you can just make trips back and forth, not a huge deal. It's just inconvenient, you know. But when you yeah. actually have to make more or less a single trip and add on top of that that there was a snowstorm the day before and it's like uh, 10 degrees outside and everything's wet and cold. And, yeah, that is a that is a terrible. Don't move in South Dakota in December. That's that's my advice yeah. for anyone. Um yeah. wait wait till like October or something, you know, when it's cooler but still nice. So yeah. It, moving it's just tedious, takes a long time. You take everything apart, you put it all back together, new stuff shows up, you put I've put so many pieces of furniture up and hung curtain rods, so many and like it's I'm just over all that stuff. So uh, I'm yeah. ready to uh relax and, and get back to my normal life here. But I'm not sure if that's happening anytime soon yet. Um are you do you miss your old place now at all? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the old places, the old places are for people that don't know. The old place was a rental, and there was nothing wrong. It was with nice. It, it was yeah, nice. It was, yeah, but, I mean, it was uh, a really nice. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, I mean, a house versus a rental. It's just always, right. It's always. I mean, we got twice the space yeah. here. It's just a different. It's a different ball game. Right. Do you? You probably literally have twice the space. Um. Yeah. Though, yeah. yeah. Before. Uh, and. Like this room is probably three times the size of the old, like the old room when I was podcasting, I could reach my arm back and basically almost touch the wall. Now, I mean, I'm in, in a, this is an enormous bedroom that I'm recording in now. So I got, I got lots of room. Well, and maybe it all, it might come across different for those that watch this on YouTube, but at least for me broadcasting across zoom right now, you know, I'm not seeing the final YouTube production. I'm <laughs> yeah. seeing the zoom production. And even when you first turned it on, 
there's no depth perception. I oh. can't tell. Like, <laughs> yeah, it does yeah, just look I, like it a purple looks screen like maybe you could me. reach across and touch that wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, so, it, it's, uh, but then I saw you get up and stand and walk back there, and it's like, oh, like, oh, that's a. Yeah. It kind of looked like the same size as the other room until yeah, you got up is, and walked. I'm like, oh, it's an optical illusion. This is probably the same size room as the old studio when we used to record together. Okay. Like oh, okay. So yeah, it you cannot tell that from this yeah. right now. Like, yeah, you'll you'll probably yeah. see it better online because the cameras. For the actual video, the camera's pointed down right. so you can see the baseboard behind me. But actually, no, right. that doesn't really give a sense of depth at all. So yeah, it might it still might not come across. Yeah. <laughs> so it is way bigger than your your uh, your interim spot. Yeah. Yes, yes. This is an actual. I mean, this is. I'm in the basement, like always. You know, like like how person should <laughs> podcast. Of course, that's, I am in the basement. That goes without saying. Absolutely. I think. But it is one of the biggest rooms in the house too. So it's, it's you know I really hit the jackpot here. We've certainly, out of all our episodes, done a lot of ba- basement podcasting, I, haven't we? I mean, it's 99% of them at this point. Yeah, the only ones that weren't, We're for just the a most part. couple in the first hundred. Was the very, all. very beginning ones, like, like maybe very, the first 10. Yeah, was, that's what I was going to say, 10. And then a couple. And then uh, some of the last few of Tyler's were in his upstairs, if you remember right. that, his second floor. And then I was going to laugh and say, well, and then we didn't do, we were upstairs at Mike's, but also we recorded in the basement at In the Mike basement Mike's at Mike's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of basement podcasting, yeah. really. Yes, there is. The way it should be. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so uh, the is this, I mean, officially then, like, to put a number on it, is it 6.9.1? We can, I think, because geographically I'm going to be in this exact location. It's just the behind me will be changing over time. But unless something crazy happens, I will be sitting here or possibly my, my desk could be on a different wall. But it should look really, really similar to this going forward. So okay. I think this is officially 6.9.1. This is 6.9.1. Okay. So when you add decor, it might be 6.9.1.1. <laughs> right. Yeah. We just never get past the point one. It just gets another point added on. <laughs> just keep asking, adding 6. additional. 6.9.1.1.1. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so what about uh, directionally? Is it still... You know, what it, What would we had said before, eastern, southeast, South Dakota? I am you know, even that, that farther doesn't... east, if okay. you can believe that. So, I mean, Iowa. So, that really doesn't change. It just becomes more true. It's just even more true. I'm just so close to Iowa now. I am I mean, it's just, I can practically. You're almost a stone's throw. I can practically see the border patrol of Iowa just sitting waiting for yeah. me from my house. You can see the cornfields from your house. I can, yep. <laughs> oh, good. So, eastern, southeast. South Dakota, more true than ever. I was just worried that we were saying things that are inaccurate, and oh, as a matter no. of fact, we're becoming even increasingly oh, accurate. Oh, oh, yeah, we're getting more accurate as the days go by. Okay. Uh, I, um, hmm, do you have one? You you put a few few things in there. I've got a sack segment. I would like to show off my sack, actually. Mm. I'll, do, I'll do this. I'd like to do yeah, this when you do that. the live listeners are on, too. Uh, this will be a, a fun little sack segment. A lot of times, sack segment are... Well, in the start, sack segments were not things that people sent us. They were things that I just brought to the podcast in my sack. Yes, you, so were, you were taking the initiative on your own. They used before. to not be things that people sent us, and then slowly over time it became more of what people were sending us. Um, but now this is not some. I It came in the mail, but I purchased it uh, myself, so it is courtesy of, of me. But I got a little artwork for uh oh nice this little artwork for massonomics gym sweet i like that and it's hard to talk talk and yeah so i'll, I'll describe time, so tanner is holding up is that like a canvas print or what is yeah, that this is a canvas i went okay. with a canvas yeah print he's got the one. canvas print so it's a little chunky you know you can hang on to it and it's yeah there's everyone it. flexing after the lift hard live easy classic meet in aberdeen we're all in front of the backdrop jonathan's laying in front in a speedo but everyone's got their meat tees on, their medals, the shirts, the hats, and looking like they're having the time of their lives. That's so I'm going to find a good spot for this at the gym. I like, I, how, I, I like how the middle Massonomics banner, the name just barely pops over everyone's head. That looks awesome. Yeah, I made sure to not crop that out. I uh-huh. wanted to keep in just that little bit of Massonomics there. Yeah, that's This really did good. not come out particularly clear. You, it, it won't come across to you, and I don't. you won't notice unless you're up close looking at yeah. it. But I just like less than impressed with the... 
Because I've done some really good ones before where I print them offline, and I'm like, oh, that looks awesome. Have you done this, canvas ones before, though? No, and okay. that's why I wonder, is so, that just a subject of canvas? Canvas that they just, is a little less detailed because it's such yeah. a rough surface that it can't, yeah. it just can't be as detailed. Is the way yeah, I the detail it. sucks. But also, but, though, once you put that on the gym wall, no one gets no, within yeah. a few feet, and they'll probably think it looks awesome. Yeah, it does look good. It's just like close up, and especially with other ones I've had, like they came out so much better than what I even uh, had anticipated. But yeah, that's cool, and it's uh, long, wide, and short is good because I have some spaces in the gym that are wide and short, so yeah. I can squeeze that in there. Yeah, just sneak it in anywhere. Yeah, that's awesome. I like that. Yeah, it'd be cool beans. I think. Really, oh, really, so everyone really that was at the Lift Hard Live Easy Classic gets to make it onto the walls of oh, Mass Summit yeah. Gym now. They get a little spot there amongst the uh, wall walls of fame in there. That's good. Oh, that was our sack segment this week. What about Creed? We've kind of talked Dude, about Creed last week. Okay, we, we talked about Creed last week. Um, of course, President of North Dakota gives me all types of information on Creed, following up with me all the time on that. And I'm just, I just got to go on the DMs right now. We, we could basically change our chat to be like Creed Central over here. But first, he sent me a clip. I believe this is from two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. I think it was three weeks ago when the Vikings played the Bears. Vikings quarterback is Kirk Cousins. And uh, they're asking him, you know, what was different this week? What'd you do? And he's like, we, we just, we got some Creed going in the locker room. We had to play some Creed. It just got everyone together. So like, that's what, and it's a, it's a, it's probably a minute long clip where he's just talking about, yeah, we've been listening to Creed all week. Like we're loving it. And then he just sent me this one yesterday and it was if the baseball playoffs and I want to see, I believe it's the Rangers. I'm not following the baseball playoffs at all, but the, uh, but the Texas Rangers, I believe, uh, have been playing Creed all postseason, not only like in the locker room and the players, but they're playing it in the arena too, and everyone's screaming and singing Creed together, and they even got Creed in the clip with them. The, the band is in there talking, giving some context and how they feel about everyone listening to their music and all that. So um, Creed's second wave, it's happening, man. We're, we're on the front lines of this. We're living it right now. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh i have been so it has been an incredibly crazy busy week for me so i'm really out of loop on the discord and i've been trying to keep up but it's just i have not had much time but i did see some good talk of people uh reminiscing about some older new metal playlists and, and things like that from follow-up from last week there was quite a few people that said they re- even though they were tempted to listen to some on their uh devices they had to choose not to because they didn't want any of their devices suggesting any of That's, those uh, songs in the future. <laughs> I used to have the exact same mentality, and then I had kids, yeah. and I'm like, no, my oh, Spotify yeah. recommendation is so messed up. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> or it's like uh, the one, the two times a month I I want to go to watch Netflix, and I pull up, and it <laughs> yeah, is the nothing are. but kids shows, and I'm like, yep. does uh, like I'm like, does Netflix even have anything that's not a kid? <laughs> Do they make uh, things for show? people older than seven? Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> same thing. My YouTube feed. It used to just yeah. be like, man, YouTube just gets me. It always knows what I'm into. And now it's like, oh, do you want to watch Coco like Melon? I do not want to watch it. Do you want to watch this person paint unboxing a picture? Unboxing of yep. a Barbie. Yep. Nope, yeah. don't want to watch any of this. Nope, and that's all I get now. So my my YouTube uh, algorithm has been bombed as well. And still that that is on one more thing on Creed, that meme uh, when they're at like Dallas Cowboys Stadium when it's yes. uh, Flying. Uh, Scott Flying. Staff yeah. and... Yeah, then it, <laughs> that's classic. The version of it I saw the this week was the European mind can't comprehend this video, <laughs> yes. and then it's <laughs> yeah. singing. Yep, Creed singing oh, at the halftime one, yeah. show uh, of the of the Dallas Cowboys football game in, in probably like two thousand three or so. Uh, yeah, there's a guy flying through on some ribbon. He's ball- it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you gotta you gotta go look up the meme and uh, might make your head explode. Now, speaking of things exploding, should we shake up uh, some cans and yeah, dip You can. Them? I can just dream okay. about it because, uh, like I said, <laughs> I know I had a, something to drink around here somewhere, but uh, apparently it has disappeared. You forgot the sparkling waters on the move, it sounds oh, like. Oh, that's what it was. I better get back to the old place now. Yeah. Demand my See, water. You, do, you are going to need to go back there. I do have, well, actually, I do have one water up, update, and that is the fridge at my new place. Instead of having the the little you know the little water dispenser on the door where you you push yeah. it and it spits the water out, well the right. front is flat. You open it up and there's a built-in water pitcher 
and you pour it, you pull it out, you pour your water, so much faster, which is nice. It's cold, which is good too. And the second you put the pitcher back in the door and you close it, you hear it go, and it fills itself right back up. Self-filling, filtering water pitcher. It's, I thought it was dumb like and gimmicky. It's inside the it's a, refrigerator it's a, it's or it's a, like a small, nope, a hidden nope, door? It's in, nope, it's in like in your door where your condiments are. There's probably like a little 32-ounce water pitcher. So enough mm. for a couple people to fill up some glass of water. But the second you close the door, you can hear the thing fill it back up with water so it's always cold it's always filtered it's always ready to go and it's sitting right there i thought it was dumb and gimmicky but it was like ah, whatever like okay it? and now i told my wife i'm like this is i've drank more water in the last three days than i have like than i normally do over the course of a day like ever i don't know something about it just being quick clean and easy makes me makes me drink it i could see that being good uh the trick to all of those any of them, whatever kind it is, is never changing the filter. Yes, absolutely. So that way yep. you, th- you believe you're drinking filter water, but the filter is so old, you are in fact oh, yeah. may- possibly drinking dirtier water than if it wasn't. Yep. At least that's what I do. I, I make sure to never change the filter. I've gone through st- Well, really what it comes down to, though, when you, when you <laughs> go through stages of this, is after a while you're like, this water just trickles out. I don't even, yeah, why yeah. is this water so slow? And you're like, oh yeah, I haven't changed the filter in a long time. And then you change the filter. And you think, why do I have this pressure washer shooting yeah, this water out yeah. at me? So that is the one uh, the one incentive to, to change that filter is for the water pressure. Uh, b- uh, Big Keith in the Discord said uh, cold water is underrated. Uh, I, and I know this would not be a popular opinion, <laughs> I almost don't care at all about the temperature oh, of my water. I don't, I, <sighs> I basically, I actually just, I just, it can't be hot. Well, actually, yeah. I shouldn't even say it can't. I don't like it if it's hot. If it is room temperature, uh, from when I was deployed, we drank room temperature water mm-hmm. all the time, and it just got to the point where I just didn't care at all. Like, but I also don't, when I drink water, I always drink like 30 ounces at a time within about three minutes. Like, I drink water like as a, um, just like as a job, not yeah. as a, like a, <laughs> So I don't, like, if it's kind of room temperature, like, if there's just bottles of water sitting around in the room, I almost like it better because I can drink it so much faster where, versus if it's frozen cold, I'm like, ah, oh, it's burning my throat. I 100% know what you mean. And but I'm, I do recognize I'm probably yes. not in the majority there, well, too. Well, no, I 100% know what you mean. It is way easier to drink water when it's closer to room temperature, especially if you're chugging it, which you kind of do. Um, I personally... I could go, I think I've talked about this before. If I'm not working out, I could go, I could wake up in the morning, eat my breakfast, not drink any water. I sit at a computer all day. I don't get thirsty. I could just go an entire day without drinking water. But having cold water makes me more likely to drink the water. So that is, you know, it's one of those thirst hacks. You know, I'm all yeah. the thirst hacks over here. Um, that makes, I, that's probably, I bet most, more people fall into that category. But I would also say, non-water beverages i do like them to be cold almost almost all non plain mm-hmm. water beverages i like them a lot better if they're cold mm-hmm. like a LaCroix, i could drink uh if it was room temperature but it's not going to be anywhere from room good. temperature to piping hot right it's a well, wide... preferably piping hot actually in this case that's a little <laughs> bit of a oddity in that sense but yes <laughs> but just water give me room temperature and i do not even care at all yep you're just old-fashioned like that not. That's back in my day, we had piss water. We drank pi- we drank our own piss because it was sterile Just and we liked the taste. Drank the sweat off the toilet. <laughs> we drank artesian well water, which is actually true, yes. but gross. Now, oh well water, <laughs> yucky. Mm. <laughs> mm, yuck. <laughs> Yeah, web water. I, d- I don't know that that means anything to most people listening. I'm not sure it's, what. Well, uh, web water is good, though, isn't it? Oh, web water is yeah. kick ass. Yeah. I was gonna, well, yeah. did you ever have well water growing up? Like, what, were you serious? Yeah, there? until I was five. Oh, we God. had uh, artesian well water. Yes. And uh, at the time, I thought that that was good and other stuff was bad until I, I was shortly flipped that after getting on used to it. I'm like, now that tastes awful. Oh, my parents have well water and it is god awful. It stinks. <laughs> It's, oh we, they, don't, they don't even it's the, the mineral content of it is just yeah. crazy like look at your shower if you don't clean it for a week or yeah. two like is there was i showering in copper like what's going on here <laughs> i mean uh, it's it 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 literally like stains your teeth uh uh orange if yeah you drink it's, it they, they don't uh, they don't use that water for for drinking like they get different water for drinking because it's so it's just awful 
Um, Aberdeen water is not. I know. I'm. We had to have talked about this many times, but Aberdeen like, water is not good. I'm sure yeah. I'll be dying young for the amount of Aberdeen uh, water that I've consumed in my yeah, life. Yeah, it's not so. good. You can be guaranteed once every two to three years they will issue a citywide warning saying you should not drink the water. Yeah, just like do like we live, twice. Do we live a, in twice a year, <laughs> even if there's not a there'll warning. Be, like be a twice a year, warning. I'm like. Yeah, I'm like, and even without it, I'm like, yes, yeah, so that thing is happening right now oh, that the happens. Stink. The stink. Yeah, and that's I'm like, now I'm in. repulsed by it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, that's, it is disgusting, and it's funny that we're talking about civilized, developed America here, but uh, no, this is, uh, that, that's what we're actually talking about. It's like, nope, nope, the quality of water is just so bad. Yeah, and they should have got on web water mm-hmm. lo- many, many years when ago. When they had the chance. Yeah, when they had the chance, they should have done it. Didn't do it. I uh, I wrote something down here about locker room. Yeah, I really want to know what that is. Yeah. Are you and, installing uh, a locker room at the Massonomics gym? That is actually it. I wanted to officially announce on the podcast <laughs> that not, we not. will have a state-of-the-art locker room now at Massonomics <laughs> gym. Uh, we're removing the, the whole front room will now just be a locker room equipped It'll with be a 30-person uh, sauna. Stall shower. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, six tall showers, those full-body vibration machines, all that good stuff. Everyone loves if whenever I ask someone uh, what equipment we should get at the gym, you know, when I ask them honestly, like uh-huh. uh, any of the gym members, like, oh, what do you think we should get next? Because I like to poll people occasionally, and everyone always says, oh, when are we getting the tanning bed or the sauna? <laughs> yes. Like, that's the, yeah, that's the ready classic. Yeah. <laughs> classic. <laughs> And, and like, every ah, time yes, you just start standing up with your leg, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like, you like, pre- do you pretend like you're having an I'm asthma like, attack? You're like, laughing so hard. Oh, 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 wait a second here. A tanning bed. <laughs> stop. stop. <laughs> just can't catch your breath. <laughs> that would be crazy because this is the kind of gym that would never have that stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. So once we get past that joke, then I get to actually hear what they might, what equipment they might want. Although no, no one has any good suggestions left anymore. Hardly because uh, oh, really we have so much, I mean, to no fault of them, but yeah, um, it's just, uh, but you it's tell just, them to try harder and leave. That's <laughs> uh, just like everyone's kind of like, I don't know. It seems like we've kind of gotten everything. Said, now, Damn it, know, try harder. Like, I need someone to tell me something to buy. Right, right. Ah, uh, but I was in an actual locker room, and it's been a really <laughs> long time since I've been uh-huh. in a locker room. <laughs> Uh, a really long time since I've like had to do that, like change in a locker room and do stuff like that. Have you, like, are you allowed you to, to say gym? what this is for or what locker room you were in? Yeah. Well, it was, well, it was the women's locker room and I really shouldn't be saying <laughs> it, but, uh, no. uh, last time I was uh, in an actual locker room. Well, I will say yeah. that, uh, the gym, Duty, that I, the gyms you've gone to, they, they do have a locker room and they have saunas in them and everything too. Uh, they're, they're both actually completely honest, pretty damn nice. But my yeah. standards are also pretty damn low. So <laughs> right, right. Um, so I was for noon ball. I oh, had to. Yes, I had to yes. Use the locker room. You know, I came in work clothes and had to change. And then when I was done, change out. Obviously. Um, but the damnedest thing happened. It was the I was like this is like the most stereotypical thing ever that could happen the in o- the men's locker room. The old guys were hanging. Like refused to put clothes on. <laughs> just, uh, the, the just having one guy, too much fun. Yeah, the one guy in his eighties came in there because he was had been like shooting hoops and stuff too, and he had come in shortly after me, started telling me stories. R- really nice guy, but proceeded to get buck naked and sat there with no attempt to get any other clothes on as I completely <laughs> got dressed and like got out and got out of there because I had to go to work. Never. Not as so much as a pair of underwear sat there just full conversation for 10 minutes mm. or five, you know, five to 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. of just sitting buck naked. That's, <laughs> I mean, it's, I don't, I, I'm, I've never, I've never understood it. Like, I don't even like to be like naked laying around on stuff in my house. I just like, I'm getting things. I could get out of the shower, be naked and go like sit on the couch. I'd feel like I'm making the couch dirty, you know, like, I, and that's in my own house. I don't want to be like sitting in some disgusting public locker room naked running around no isn't isn't the rule of thumb you try to be naked for you you are you do 
what you, you prep your site so you can be naked <laughs> as short as possible. Like you're like, not I'm going to be like, you have to when like this comes this off. Sprint. I'm, yeah. Not that you have to no. do like sprint like, Oh my God, I'm naked. But also it's no. like, uh, I'd rather just, it's like, I just don't need to be naked and, longer and get than on necessary with, and get on with my day. <laughs> yeah. And it was just crazy <laughs> and just having a con, you know, just, just talking and chatting and like telling stories <laughs> and just no thought. And, and to me, even it's just, the tiniest barrier of underwear makes all the difference. Oh God! Yeah. All if you just have so much as a pair of tidy whiteies on, <laughs> then I then it immediately it goes to okay to me. I'm like, no, you can hang out forever because there's just that tiniest barrier between the I, private parts. I 100 like, percent agree. I, but <laughs> I think I think what you're describing though, I think that's a dying art, right? Does anyone under the age of like 60 take that approach anymore? I don't, I don't think anybody, does, but, but it made me wonder, like, are, do they do it on purpose just because they're old and they don't have anything else? Maybe. So they're like, yeah, let's just, we're all in, they're all in on it together. That might like, be it like, too. There's like, a good let's chance. Let's all sit around naked and make them uncomfortable for like a really long yeah, period like, of like time. Like we're also, like, we're kind of at a point where like, this is comparable to if we're in high school, we're complaining about dads and now we're on the flip side of it. And we're like, Oh, we're dads. We get it now. It's like just yeah. this unspoken code that once like, you cross, no, like once you cross over to like 70 years old, you're like, all right, you can be naked as much as you want now and <laughs> inflict the pain on the young guys. <laughs> and I guess it's just like, I think they just don't care. They're like, yeah. nah, what do I, what do I care? Like what, what, do, mm-hmm. what do you care about anything at that point? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> you're just happy to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, so I did play noon ball. I did survive, but oh my God, am I hurting from that? Are you? You're feeling it? Holy crap. Were were you even feeling it like while it was going on? Were you, were you by the end of it? So I played for too long. You know, I should have cut it early. Um, but I can't help it. It is so much fun. Uh, And I just, but I just, yeah, I just can't help like the competitive, uh, Mm -hmm. nature Mm -hmm. of it. It is just, it's just uh, e- really easy to get wrapped into it, and it is it is really fun. But I just played probably like twenty minutes longer than would I you, should have. I w- should. Would you say it was the shoes that were propelling you to to go hard? Did the shoes arrive yet? I don't. No, I don't oh. have the shoes yet. So okay. I was, and that that's the other pro- part of the potential problem. I have no. We have to, like I talked about. It, I have no <laughs> basketball shoes to wear. Um, so the best option I could come up with after like looking through everything was my Reebok TR lights, mm. you know, like, that's not a ter- because I'm like, I mean, no, it's not the best option, but it's not terrible. No, that was by far my best option. Mm-hmm. And, but my feet uh, were hurting after it. And like my one, actually both my calves, but one of my calves, I feel oh, like I strained like quite a bit that I'm like, that, wow, my calf is really That hurting. would be my thing every year. I, when I played volleyball every year that, that volleyball would start up in the fall. I must just instinctively jump off my left foot all the time. Yeah. My yeah. left calf, I'd wake up in the morning with the craziest tightness in it, and it, it, felt, it felt like it was bruised. But I, yeah, I think instinctively you, you have a leg that you prefer to jump off of. And that that's what that's the same thing, too. And that's what I was going to say. It's the jumping mm-hmm. that, you know, because I do a little bit of cardio, not a lot, but a little bit. I run around a little bit. So it's two things. It's the, the quick starting, the cutting, the starting and stopping mm-hmm. so much. That's hard on my feet. And then also it's the jumping. I'm like, I don't jump for any, you know, I'd never do jumping. And even if I do like box jumps occasionally in the gym, it's so controlled and yep. Yeah. uh, You're very, and also patterned and also box jumps. It's way more about getting your legs up than it is about jumping and jumping in a basketball game is about height. Like what your legs do doesn't matter. You know, I, I had said, I'm really going to like make sure not to be jumping Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And (laughs) It's hard I, to not do that though. Well, and, yeah, it is, and like that's what happened. And I think even when I did in my calf, there was one rebound that I really, like, it was the first time in the game that I really jumped, and it's probably like the highest I've jumped in a decade. <laughs> yeah. You know, it could very like Should have had sports funny center to, there. They would have just gone <laughs> no, nuts for it. I'm not saying it. Not saying it was high. The highest I've jumped in a decade, which my body just isn't ready for. You know, it's just like throwing it into the fire all at once and. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I could feel it, uh, but it was it was really fun. But the cardio, the other thing I can feel is the burning in my chest, mm. even over a day later now. Just like my chest hasn't start like right in here. I don't know. You know that feeling yes. where you start getting yes. into the back of your throat. 100%. Yep. And the other thing I thought, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to sleep so good tonight. <laughs> Between kind of my body aches and stuff. And then I can't come down from the... Uh, 
adrenaline rush. <laughs> really? Either too. Like really? I just uh, so what start. <laughs> what, wait, what time are you playing this at? Noon. And you're still not sleeping. Not yet? the adrenaline rush, but the thought, the like, uh, p- like uh, be like, oh, if I if I had a couple good shots, I'll relive those. A couple good passes, <laughs> oh, but then more so like, it. like the like if uh, the turnovers too, just like. Yeah. Like something so, yeah. so let me stress, <laughs> there's nothing that would be more meaningless than like a noon pickup mm-hmm. basketball game. Nothing could be possibly less meaningless. But then when you make an error. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. Then I still, I think about that. I'm like, God, that was a stupid pass. <laughs> like, it's just like, we'll grind, like we'll eat at me. You know, I'll be laying in bed at 10 PM and I'll be like, God, that was a dumb pass. <laughs> you know, like I'd be like, I know better than that. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, but all of that funny, all of that funny, I did think it was fun, but might try to do it. I'd like to do it twice per week. I honestly mm. not joking when I say, I don't know that my body can handle well, I was going to say, if you did that twice per week though, you'd be in pretty damn good cardio shape. Yes. Yes. Cause I usually lift three days uh-huh. per the work week. So I do have two days there where I could go Sneak if my schedule in. allowed yeah. it. But uh, I don't know if my body will allow it at first. I might. Well, yeah. I'm, that's not even a joke. Like yeah. I, don't, I when I woke up this morning because I had to squat today. I'm like, I don't know what squats are going to feel like today. But it's funny. Once I got a little warmed up into the squats, something like squatting is such just uh, You're just in a one isolated track. movement. Yeah, and I'm like, is. it was just fine. Mm-hmm. You know, like there was nothing. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so a little bit of uncomfort you know, uncomfortableness and stuff, but I'm like, Oh, my strength is just, you know, it's not negatively affecting anything that really mattered, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So maybe, maybe once, twice a week, noon ball. Damn. It's gonna be a baller the, here before we know it. There was, uh, uh, a lot of people doing it too. You know, it's, like how, it's yeah, funny. How, many, how many people are playing at, at noon? Um, there was 15. So we were rotating in, uh, teams of five, you know, okay, winter yeah. stays, that sort of thing. And, uh, but like two, two games, Two consecutive games was enough that uh, every time I play, if I had to play two consecutive games, well, and I, games is a relative term. It's like best of five all by ones. Oh. And sometimes that's usually well, like well, a 10 to 15 to? minute game. Uh, oh, no, you, just, you just let first, leave the clock going? Or? First, first, two, yeah, that's the other thing. When you're new to these things, I always have to pick up on the rules because yeah. like places all, all have the, their set the rules. Unwritten rules. So they play everything's a one. You know, if you shoot from half court, it's a one point shot, mm-hmm. and it's first two five first team to five points. Oh, yeah. Okay. And you is think that that, that would that not e- take? Ver- does that ever go really fast though? Ha- has that gone yet? Some of them go fast, but yeah. not very often. Okay. You know, because that's it's interesting. The all by ones is an interesting uh, it really thought cuts, because like yeah, so, it really cuts down the incentive to even want to take a three then. But so many people still want to shoot threes, really? which is a funny thought to me. Like mm. how the number of people there that are still shooting threes. Yeah. And I'm just like, that doesn't well, make any sense well, it to doesn't, me. doesn't because mathematically the incentive behind threes is you only have to make half as money because you're getting 50% more. That's but then once you take that out of the equation, it's I guess unless you're a good three point shooter and the shots wide open, it's hard to justify so, that shot. And, we always played pickup basketball ones and twos. That's what I did a lot. Yeah, where that, it was that's ones what, and twos. Yeah, I, but that's a funny thing if you really think about it too, because you're so incentivizing the three point shot. Right, then it's worth twice then, as much. Yeah, it's, instead of being fifty <laughs> yeah. percent higher, it's worth twice as much. So you True. should just shoot threes constantly. Yes. In in that. See, no one had math or statistics in the early two thousands, so we didn't we didn't know these things at that time. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I did. Uh, just to toot my own horn in the first game, I did make the game winner a sweet little bank shot from min- mid range, just like I was talking about last week. So nice. I, I did, I did leave that first game. I made a couple buckets in the last one and I thought, you know, I don't care if I make a whole, another shot the whole game because I, I did what first I got to do what, is what matters. And <laughs> yeah. people, will rem- people will remember that, you know, yep. they, they've <laughs> felt my presence. <laughs> <laughs> I made an impact here today. <laughs> So more to come, but the biggest takeaway, I talked way too much about the basketball. What I really want to talk about was the locker room and how that uh, feeling of like uh, really old dudes being buck naked and how that really is a thing. It's not just a meme. I guess for the official follow-up on locker rooms, just stay tuned for like episode 1500 where uh, we'll provide more context to how we're we're doing in locker rooms when we're old. (laughs) Someone uh, in reference to your move there, Someone wanted to know about your gym gym plan then. Um, so I will have more information on that next week. 
Okay. Uh, so it's not. Set, are you saying it's not set in stone yet? It's or? not a hundred hundred percent set in stone, but I have like a ninety five percent idea of what I'm going to do. But that's on okay. my that's on my tomorrow list. So the, you're not letting the cat out of the bag yet. Uh no. I'll I'll. It'll probably be a good chunk of the episode next week. So stay tuned. Okay. okay. Well, that'll be. We'll stay. We will stay tuned then. What about these? What else? You got one other topic um, there that I was kind of wondering well, about. When's, what time's our guest coming on at? 9.30? 9.45. Oh, 9.45. Oh. Yeah. I cannot get it through my head what time we're starting here, Tanner. Uh, <laughs> I really thought it was 9.30. Are you sure 9.45? Yep. I'm pretty okay. positive. I'm just okay. I'm just double checking. Or, right, meow. Oh, yeah. I'll let you double it'll check. Because it'll be in the email right here. Yep. Okay. 9.45. Woo, good thing you're paying attention because I am not. Um, all right, I put a little thing in here called iPods. You're familiar with iPods, Tanner, as a... Yeah, what do, what do I have? You know what I have, and I don't really know what mine okay, are Okay, what is there? We got... Mine are just regular old... For, well, the first, not all of them. There's, the, is there one or two oh. iPod touches down there? And then oh, there's a, iPods. Wait a second. I was thinking of... Uh, Oh, AirPods. Well, I, I was, AirPods. I was thinking of AirPods. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Back That's it up. how stupid I am here. Let's go yeah. back a little bit now. iPods. Yeah. iPods. Okay. Now I'm even more interested that we're talking about iPods. Yes, I love iPods. Yep. The gym houses, yeah. it has one or two iPod touches, which for people that don't remember these the naming conventions here, the iPod touches is basically like an iPhone before, um, before iPhones, really. Uh, so there's iPod touches. There's a couple of the iPod classic is kind of the late name but the original ipod the one with the turny click wheel you know with a little little screen at the top right has the click wheel you know there's a not the screen but then are you talking about the what isn't the nano was the well, nano there was the nano but the nano but had, that was the tiny one yes and also the nano came in like 10 different sizes as time went on like it was never a consistent size because i had one that was like that you know what yeah it had a little screen okay, not yeah. like the ones not the what are the ones in the gym that have the big they're big yeah that'd be like the ipod like classic okay yeah okay that that was just the ipod and then later on in time after the ipod touch came out i believe they referred to it as the ipod classic it was the one with the big scrolly quick click wheel so is that the first ever ipod is that what that i mean like? that format or did the first ones not have a screen did no the, the first ones had a screen but the very okay. first ones the screen was just like blue you know like different okay. sh- like a bright blue screen with dark blue text. Okay. Um, and then at one point, I think it was like the second one ever, instead of having the buttons on the wheel, you know, top, bottom, left, right, they had all four buttons actually above the wheel, so the wheel was its own thing. I think they only did that one time, and then all of the other times the, the buttons were back in the wheel. But, yeah, so that variation of, the you know, the device existed for years and years. Then there's the iPod Mini, there's iPod Shuffle, iPod Nanos, so many variations of it as time went on. But the iPod has been officially dead Apple has not made, I think the iPod Classic has been gone for, I don't know, five, maybe eight years now. And then the iPod Touch, I think, has been gone for like three or four. So you can't buy an iPod. Apple does not make iPods anymore. They've even, they, were even, they were even making them as recent as a few years ago. They, well, think? I think the reason the iPod Touch hung around so long is it gave parents, it gave them a device to buy their kids that wasn't an iPhone, right. you know? So in, now... I think for the most part, people just, if they need their kids to have a device like that, they just hand down the old iPhone where... That's exactly what we did. Yes, you know, like, whereas, like if, it, yes, if you weren't at that stage yet, you could buy a brand new iPod Touch for right. like 200 bucks, which is still relatively cheap um, right. in the scheme of things if you don't need the calling feature. But um, in, in news of what everything's old is new again, here's the headline. Urban Outfitters will sell you a vintage iPod for $350 to celebrate the device's 22nd anniversary. And so are you familiar with Urban Outfitters? Um, the name, I guess I'm not sure what that is, though. It's a, uh, it's like a, I gotta look it up. It's like a, I gotta, it's just a clothing company. Um, yeah. I guess I would say it's like the wrong way to say it, but I'd say it's like a hipster clothing lifestyle company. So okay. they have a lot of like 90s and 80s and 2000s graphic tees, things like that. And they'll okay. have some home decor and just random weird shit in there. And it's all like super trendy kind of stuff and it's not cheap like they're they're not they're not i mean you could spend 45 dollars on a t-shirt there if you wanted to like they're they're not selling things like h&m so you're basically saying they're taking just blank tees putting their logos on them and then charging not even their logos someone else's logos and charging more (laughs) yes it's as insane as that sounds but what a racket yes uh, in in one of their continued vintagey things that they're always doing apparently uh 
they sold out of their iPod mini units, which they were selling for $200 a piece on their website, uh, which is So are pretty, these refurbished? Uh, they must be in some way, but not by Apple. And it says, for reference, the iPod mini cost $99 when it was introduced by Apple in 2005. And so they're selling that for $200 now. Oh. Um, the iPod... Color fourth generation, I'm reading them uh, off the list here. The iPod fourth generation and iPod classic fifth generation are still available for a cool $350. You so know what this means? You're sitting on a gold We're mine. We're sitting on a freaking gold mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All these foolish people that have been bringing in their iPods, donating into the gym. Mm-hmm. Uh, and here we are. It's been a... I, we played them on the long con. Yep. Here. Just, you just sit long enough and it will, um, you know, I guess if you're really going to do the hindsight's 2020 thing, um, $350 invested into Apple in 2005 would be worth a lot more money now than uh, whatever you paid for that iPod to sell it back. But true. Uh, <laughs> um, but if you do have a, a stash of iPods sitting around, Apparently there is, and these things sold out. Like I, I tried to click the links on Urban Outfitters. It just says, sorry, this product is gone. So uh, people people were buying these. They don't exist anymore. Do you have any idea what blanks uh, Urban Outfitter uses for their tees? Well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. <laughs> I always love me a good blank. Uh, maybe, we, maybe we should write Big to- Big blank guys. Maybe we here. should write to Mr. Outfitters and ask him, <laughs> ask him if he can answer that question for us. See, see how consistent the fit is as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that reminds me, make sure to check out massonomics.com. I'm wearing the uh, blue ribbon powerlifting tee right now. It went for sale earlier this month, and we do still have some available. So you can check out the blue ribbon powerlifting tee as well as the, the new hoodie, right? Have you That's worn right. the new hoodie at all? Oh, yeah. I wear the new hoodie all the time. It's one of my favorites, actually. Actually, I, I have pulled, to tell myself to not wear it myself. so much because I think the few people I see in public, like the daycare people, they probably think this is the only thing I wear. So I got to make sure to intentionally change up my wardrobe but do they know about the whole coat thing they don't know that though i i actually thought maybe i should bring a piece of paper and be like you don't understand how this works this is a coat you can't judge me (laughs) you should wear that like like what are you talking about we don't even know what you're doing (laughs) it's like that meme where the guy's standing in the corner and it's like yeah they're all judging me because they think i'm wearing the same sweatshirt but it's actually a coat (laughs) like we don't even know what you're wearing the two people dancing (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh I, my, one of my favorite parts of the, uh, our podcast is when we get to uh vocally describe memes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then paint, when you get it to paint the word picture yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's always yeah. been a okay we'll do one more the uh the uh <laughs> what's the um joaquin phoenix is he the joker whatever the one where he's smoking the cigarette yeah. and it can just be like, <laughs> you wouldn't get it it's a coat not a sweatshirt <laughs> not a hoodie it's a coat it doesn't need to be washed <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a good too. See, it got me again. Yeah. I was even going into that. I'm like, oh, it won't be funny if we do it the again. Word like, nope. memes. <laughs> yeah, doc, describing memes with words. Is, okay, uh, we'll do yeah. one more. We'll do the astronauts. <laughs> okay, the astronauts oh, yeah, behind yeah, him but, and the guy. Uh, yeah, he's like, you mean I don't? You, mean you don't have to wash it? It was cold. <laughs> yeah, it was a cold the whole, the whole time. time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so, have you washed yours at all? Uh, I have not washed it. I get kind of a bingo. I get kind of afraid to wash them. I don't want the fit to change it all on me yeah uh, it's blanks you know how the blanks go <laughs> yeah. and in addition to all that Shrinkage, we also have, I right yeah i was in the pool <laughs> in addition to that we have uh this patch hat i, I, like to get the I also so can... also wear that out and about as well holds up i don't have one of these yet or holds the hoodie good. but i keep thinking about them they're on my mind if i only knew where to find some of mm-hmm. them if only there was a way we can't spare them from the inventory no, no. <laughs> you do not. What if there's anything I've learned? It's you do not want to get high off of your own supply. You don't. Is that correct? Yep. That's the rules. We've, we've got uh, supporting our supporting members this week, Tommy. So are you familiar with the segment? It's a relative. Re- I mean, relatively speaking. Uh, for being I a relative. Is it still fair to say that relatively speaking, this is a relatively new For being a relatively new podcast? segment, I'm intimately involved okay. with this but with do this. you think that that is even fair to say, like and could you justify um, saying that this is a relatively new segment still at this point i guess if you looked at like the whole mass Nomics podcast well, when you consider that it's not in the history. first half it's in the last right. half which makes it younger so is, than does at least new mean 
Oh, you know, in the but second before, half of the... But yeah, it's in the second act. I mean, right. a lot of people would go with that definition. Some people would say, okay. well, it, it, it's happened more than once, so it's not new. But it's somewhere between happening more than once and happening in the last half is what qualifies okay. as new. So it's... Re- and, and prefaced with relatively. Right. Is so relatively then, gives you... It really opens up the, the options there. Relatively... The word relatively before anything, I think, gives you carte blanche. Well, I don't know if I'm using that phrase correctly, but I think I'm relatively <laughs> saying carte blanche. I think blanche relatively right, you're but. saying carte blanche correctly. Yeah. And then uh, I also think that does hearken to exponentially as well. Exponentially before anything yeah. gives you carte blanche to use that however you would just like. Just exaggerate as much or as little. <laughs> yes, or like yes. Exponentially just means more. Yes, first it, of all, it all just it means more. Uh-huh. <laughs> Like uh-huh. quite a bit more, quite a bit more mm-hmm. exponentially. Like my, yep, my my son ate two pieces of pizza and I ate exponentially more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, relatively speaking, this is a relatively new segment of the podcast, supporting our supporting members. So we've got this group of supporting members, which shout out to all the supporting members. Been growing a little bit here uh, in the last month. So just excited to see some of those new faces that have come in there. Mm-hmm. We always like to have a new supporting member. The so thanks to everyone. Discord. Great faces, yeah. great places. South Dakota. <laughs> I can't, I don't, can you see, hear someone say great faces, great, great places, places and not be like South Dakota? Great, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I forgot about that until right yeah. now, but yeah. I knew instantly what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> everyone else does not. <laughs> Except I for do. Our fellow we know. Them, we know yeah. what it's about. But it has been growing, and we we love to see the new faces in there, and we, we're appreciative of everyone that stuck around for a while. When you become a supporting member of the Massonomics podcast, it's essentially Perk City. Here's why it's Perk City. There's a lot of perks that you get when you sign up. One of them, just to name one of them, you get a discount code. Two of them, just to name another one of them, you get access to our Discord community, our exclusive Discord community filled three with of, only supporting members. Three of them, just to name a third one, you can say Perk City now. <laughs> Population U. <laughs> and then also another thing, we send out surprise free gifts. A few of those a year. I'll say that generally. Uh, there's no set schedule, but I think we do a few of those but, a year. Uh, big things coming. And then you get, uh, if you want, here's a r- real talk. If you want any chance of being able to sign up for the Lift Hard Live Easy Classic 2024, the supporting members are going to get uh, their first shot at that. Also, Massonomics Gym members, a much smaller population, but they'll get their early shot at it too. But supporting members are going to get the first shot at that. If you're not a supporting member, you might not make the cut. Your chances of getting in are You're going to be fighting over a really small piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. Piece of the pie. So, um not to lord that over you, but you know that's kind of an advantage that the supporting members are going to have. Just something to think about. And then they get to know about new drops, early early drop information, uh, you know, early access to drops, drops, stuff like that. And we like to give back to them, bringing it all back around this segment, supporting our supporting members. We talk about uh, a few of them that we notice that are doing cool stuff. So this week, Big Lucas S was competing at Strongman Corp Nats. I do not know for sure how Big Lucas did. Um, Big Keith is listening. Big Keith might know. I think Big Lucas is trains out there by him somewhere. I'm not sure how he did at Strongman Strongman Corp Nats, but uh, just competing there is a cool, cool experience, no doubt. And yes. also competing there was Big Tyler Thompson at Strongman Corp Nats, and he... Uh, he qualified for the Arnold, um, oh. for the Arnold, uh, is it, big amateur Arnold strongman. Is it competition. because Bobby's his dad? Yes, Bobby is his father, his <laughs> biological, biological father. Biological father. <laughs> that uh, will for always remind me of Mike because I've Every heard time. Mike use that phrase twice now in our know, passings and with him. It's them. so funny. One was about <laughs> Jared, where Feather. he said, "Ah, yes. yes, Jordan Feather is my biological son." And then when we were leaving the gym on the gym <laughs> yeah. tour. He said, oh, you guys are welcome back anytime. And we were like, oh, all right, we'll be here tomorrow. And he's like, ah, yes, you two are now my biological sons. Yes. <laughs> my adopted biological sons. Yeah, it's so stupid. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, big Tyler Thompson, a uh, close relative of some sort to Bobby Thompson, did qualify for the Arnold. So we'll be seeing him in uh, March. That'll be cool. Very good. Then Big Daisy did his first comp. 
His first powerlifting meet in seven years. He had a 529 squat, a 308 bench, and a 551 deadlift. Nice. First in his class of two. Very good. So beat that other dude. Then uh, Big Toby did a strongman competition. Um, that's whatever. Uh, where was that? Where's that at? Because there was other crew that were there. Aren't they, well, are they in Arizona or was this? Yeah. Where was it like Coachella's Arizona. strongest? Yeah, or it's not like Coachella. Okay. Strong. Yeah, yeah they all like had that. like they all wore like the Indian headdresses that you do when yeah. you go to Coachella. And right. And that's what they. That their, was what their they little did festival goers, competed. aren't they? Yeah. Uh, and he got first in his class, and there was other big crew there to support. Uh, big Moto was there, mm-hmm. and Big Andrew was there, and Big Mr. Backabs was also there. I don't know if those guys ran into Big, big Mr. Backabs, but he said he was also there, I think. I saw the picture of those guys together. It looked like a fun time. Yeah. Back. Like, Jeez, thanks for inviting us. Yeah. I didn't, wish I would have got the invite. I would have been there. I normally go to Coachella every year. This is the yeah. one year I haven't gone. <laughs> of course. The one year I take off, that's how it happens. And then, last but not least, you could check out Unpaid and Underrated this last week. Their big crew member guest this week was Big Ryan Johnson, none other than Jacked and Ginger, none other than uh, co-star of the HBO (laughs) hit series. What's it called, Tommy? <laughs> the Righteous Gemstones. The Righteous Gemstones. Catch them on The Righteous Gemstones mm-hmm. every Tuesday night on HBO. <laughs> <laughs> Season 12, starting tomorrow. <laughs> he was in The God Squad, though. And you can hear more about him other than just being on The God Squad if you listen to uh, this week's Unpaid and Underrated podcast. Something else I wanted to tell everyone about is Juggernaut AI. This is the smartest programming for you. Juggernaut AI is like having an expert powerlifting coach right there in your palm or in your pocket, wherever you're putting your phone right there. It's like having a expert powerlifting pocket in your cell phone belt clip. Mm -hmm. If that's how you, what you put your phone in. Have you ever had one of those, Tommy? Never have. I've only, only dreamt about it. I have never had a cell phone belt clip. I don't know. I don't think that's something I'll ever have is a cell phone (laughs) belt clip holder. I say, Hey, you know they make pockets, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they invented pockets just for this. I don't see me having one of those, but I digress. Wherever it is you choose to put your phone, I actually right I, inside of it. I'm so pro belt holder that I have a belt holder for my phone, a belt holder for my keys, a belt holder for my wallet, a belt holder for uh, not my chapstick, but someone else's chapstick. I just You're, have them all in my belt. It's like Batman. That sounds like I was going to say you sound like Batman <laughs> yeah, over there. Yeah. Batman of uh, <laughs> crap. <laughs> <laughs> this is worth doing. Might as well put it on my belt. Put yeah, it out that's there. Ba- that's definitely Batman. Plus, status. I have a big, oversized Western cowboy belt buckle in the middle, too. <laughs> yeah. So these things just wrap all the way around me. <laughs> it actually <laughs> brings your pants down because it there's does. so much weight. I have to have a belt, belt for my belt to hold it all up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, check out Juggernaut AI. It's the training that Tommy and I both use. We've used it for months and months and months now, and uh, we've been able to see progress on that and uh you know i don't have to take our word for it though you check it out for yourself there's a free trial you can check that out i think you get like a 30-day free trial maybe and it's one of those apps where it is actually pretty beneficial to actually get the free trial and look at it and if you've never used like a even if you've used some other strength training apps before this kind of could blow you away i think not to overemphasize it, but I think it could blow you away the first time you see it and you go, wow, this kind of kicks ass. Go in there, play around with it. Uh, if you choose to sign up, the best part here is you can use uh, discount code Massonomics. That'll save you 10% for the lifetime of that membership. It ends up being about 30 bucks a month is all for for that. So not much more than the price of uh, one cup of coffee per <laughs> week. Really uh, not like, much more than like two cheeseburgers at McDonald's. Yes. <laughs> yes. Coach yes. in your pocket. Uh, yes. Would you say that the app not only kicks ass, it, it relatively kicks ass compared to other apps on the market? It re- um, but does, re- does saying relatively just like discount? What, also, does it discount <laughs> right. whatever you're saying right. next? Okay. I'll like you're saying like, yeah. Would you say it literally kicks ass? Yeah, yeah. that's another thing. Because that's a good way to use literally, literally is not an actual literal sense. <laughs> That's yeah, almost, the, do that that's a almost lot, the rule for literally is it can't yeah, actually yeah. be literally. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
No, it does relatively kick ass, but I just wonder if you, what by saying relatively, you're. You're saying relatively right. because it's, you have to say sort of it because otherwise it's not true. Right, way, yeah. right, right, right. Mm-hmm. It's very context dependent. It's uh, Those words are just great for spinning things whatever way you want to spin them, though, aren't they? Yeah, relatively, uh, literally, exponentially. Yes, yeah, they're great, great modifiers. <laughs> it's all a part of spinning something the way you want it spun. <laughs> yeah. What a tangled web we weave. Spinning a tangled web, yes. Yeah. Oh, today's episode is also brought to you by Swiss Link. In 1995, Maurice Bigmo Huffman founded Swiss Link with the mission to bring authentic Swiss Army goods to the United States and into the hands of those yearning for quality gear at uncompromised prices. Now, their mission has led them to Shark Tank, where you can mm. buy their sick-ass storm bags that blow up to 10,000 times their regular size. Uh, that number was... Not literal. That was like a relative number. I was saying there. Relatively yeah, ten thousand. Relatively, times literal, so, uh, yeah. it's, it's pro- but they do grow exponentially from where they start. They uh, do grow ex- exponentially. Yes. So, um, Big Mo has been traveling far and wide in search of the best items from military forces around the world. He doesn't only find authentic military clothing for Swiss Link. He brings in everything you can imagine from Swiss. Swiss Swiss bayonets to check microscopes. SwissLink.com is also home to the SwissLink Classic Wool Blankets. They're an ideal mix of 80% wool and 20% recycled fibers. It's that special blend that provides a soft, luxurious feel while maintaining all the benefits of wool. And if you live in South Dakota like us, you should know that winter is just around the corner. Want to step up your winter game? That's right. Go to SwissLink and they got wool pants just right there waiting for you. Uh, Swiss Link's exceptional collection and dedication to quality customer service distinguishes them from the rest. Enjoy a 15% discount on your next purchase at SwissLink.com by entering code MASS at checkout. That's SwissLink.com, code MASS, M-A-S-S, will save you 15%. Thank you, Swiss Link. Thanks, Swiss Link. Is our guest getting on the horn yet? Uh, or? I'm not quite yet. Okay. Do we still have people on live, or did we boot them off yet? Oh, here's our guest right here. Uh, I'm going to okay. boot everyone right now. Okay. While you're booting them, I'll just and mention... reporting them for sexual aggravation. <laughs> Presume they should never be able to attend a work meeting again. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> yes, report yeah, that'd them. That'd be awesome if that's actually how... Because it for does fun. ask every time you boot someone if you want to report them. Can you report them for terrorist It'd be amazing if I reported them and it gave me a reason, and these accounts actually did get banned, and these people just... For weeks on end, we're getting okay. I'm uh, I'm gonna let our guest in right now, though. All right. Oh, oh there we go. There we go. Be good. You guys can hear me, okay? Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Nice. Good to see you guys. Yeah. How's yeah. it going? Yeah. Good to good. see you too. Man, it's just like I just I pictured you at the Arnold still. I don't know why. <laughs> we just live there like all year <laughs> long. We're like Arnold trolls. <laughs> That's right. I was like, I was like, they're probably gonna be with. The, there's a trailer. There's a booth. Yeah, That's yeah. what there's, there's gonna be doing. Just, this yeah, every really March bo- they open the doors yeah. and like we. It's come really out. boring the other 362 days of the year, but we're really ready for when people start showing up. <laughs> yeah, what's your rent like at the convention center? <laughs> we just we just clean the bathrooms. It's we, yeah, <laughs> that would not be worth it. Cleaning the bathrooms there would not be worth the free. Uh, uh, booth rent to tell you yeah. the truth i know that rent's going up but that seems a little excessive to be honest <laughs> yeah. yeah so like cut some cut 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 us a break come on they said that yeah. san diego san diego is apparently the most expensive place in this in the in the united states to live but columbus ohio is is giving us a run for our money so <laughs> yes uh all right big jordan we're just going to jump right into it if you're ready to go we got so yeah. much good stuff to talk about here we uh we don't want to miss any of it yeah let's do it also, is this live? I always you guys do um, it live. Yeah. Well, so we have our guests technically live with us for the first half, but this this all gets edited, so this won't come out. No one, they're kicked out now. They don't see this, but uh, yeah, so no one will see this until uh, yeah. Like so no one's no minutes. one's listening live, and if you you slipped up and said uh, <laughs> uh, you know you murdered someone last night or something, yeah. we can edit that out. Still, there's still time. No. Yeah, that so. was tonight. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> For the feds listening, no, that's not, I'm, I'm kidding, okay, guys. For the feds no. that are, yes, definitely listening. Yes, definitely. Uh, that's, that's right, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, so we'll, we'll jump into it. Uh, uh, Big Jordan, we're excited to get you back on the Massonomics podcast, a return guest. Luckily for you, we joined uh, the 21st century with this one, and we now we now do this video. Last time we were on, I think we were just uh, just old-fashioned rotary phone call. It's a cell so phone. We, yeah, yeah, I was waiting. I was waiting for a text. I was like, "Oh shoot, no, we got Zoom. That's right. I yeah. had to use the fancy mic. That's we're right. just you guys are leveling up. Yeah, we're just, congratulations, yeah. technology wizards over here. 
It That's was right. uh it was uh Dr. Mike. He made fun of us so much time that so much that one time about not doing it on Zoom. We we're like, well, okay, we bet I guess we have to do it now. We can't stand yeah, the harassment. If Isratel is, is trolling you, you must change. That's yeah. he's actually the behavior change specialist and what he does, he just berates people into changing. That's, That's his really. tactic yeah. is like mm-hmm. relentless uh harassment. Yeah, the yeah. cyberbullying can only go so far before we cave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. No, and you guys got fancy mics. Oh, it sounds great. Yeah. I love it. You just did a meet. Am, am Saturday. I right? A power powerlifting meet on, like so we're just kind of coincidentally uh, let's just say, heck, we planned it that way. We wanted to talk to you right after your meet so we could <laughs> recap it. But uh, you did uh, at uh, Big Allen's place there, Untamed Strength, correct? Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, this is at uh, Untamed Strength, Sacramento, California. It was a USPA meet. Um, the way I pick meets is kind of, I don't know, it's probably not the way most people do it. Most people, they'll pick a meet and then train for it and then go go do it. The way I, I do it is kind of in reverse. I'm always training, right? And that's not a flex. It's just... I just like training. And if my lifts are going well, I start getting a hankering to compete, right? Because you're like, oh, I could actually PR. I could set a PR total, PR lift, whatever. And so training was going well. And I go, I probably got somewhere between five to seven weeks before this streak of good luck, good juju, good energy, whatever kind of ends, peters out. So I need to find a meet that has a spot open is ideally within driving distance or somewhere I can, a quick flight. And also is somewhere where the homies are going to be. Cause I don't want to go, I don't want to fly across the country and show up and just be like, well, Hey, I guess I'm just, I'm <laughs> it's just. kind of fun for it to be fun. Right. Exactly. Like That's the whole point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So people are like, why did you do this local meet? It, it was, it was a local USPA meet in Sacramento, California. They're like, why did you do that instead of like nationals or whatever? And I'm like, I, the reason I compete right now is for me to beat my own total. Like, and that's, and I want to set myself up for success. I don't love like the huge meets, all a thousand people have signed up. I'm like, that's cool to go to. And if like, if you want to compete against the best in your, you know, division, great. But for me, I'm like, how do I set myself up for success so I can hit the biggest total period? Cause that's for me, that's why I'm still involved in the sport. So Alan told me he was throwing on, putting on this meet. And I was like, great. I love that gym. I love Alan let's go with God and, and do this thing and uh, see if I can get some of that untamed energy. And uh, yeah, this was like the first meet that's come together uh, since maybe 2014, 2015. And what I mean by that is in 2014, I totaled 1795. I squatted 640, I benched 430 and pulled 725. And the reason why those are all like non-kilo, like correct numbers is because they didn't even have kilo plates at this particular uh-huh. meet. Like, yeah, but I was in medical school and it was a local gym and I was like, great. And so I've been chasing that dragon since 2014. I did that meet with knee wraps. And then I was like, I want to beat that total in knee sleeves. And every meet that I've done since I haven't been able to crack it either, you know, some, one of the lifts, I wasn't that strong or, you know, I just, you know, trying to get uh, your raw squat with knee sleeves up to your squat with knee wraps. That's a whole, that's a whole different deal or dealing with an injury or whatever. And so everything just came together. I PR'd my total, PR'd all my lifts. Honestly, I thought about if I locked out my third deadlift, 733 set it down. I go, do I kiss the plates? Should I just, (laughs) should I just be done? And then I was like, but immediately when I set it down, I go, I could probably pull 750 at some point. It's (laughs) classic. I need to compete again. I mean, that that is though, as far as powerlifting goes, that is the ultimate redemption story. You, you had nine years from the time you you hit this number to the time you break it. And the number of people out there, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Tanner would probably even say to an extent too, of like, Man, that that number was back how many years ago? I just know it. Yeah. The, the next one's just right around the corner. I can get there. If it all goes together, I can get there. But that's it's hard to get there. That's yeah. uh yeah, that's that is the way I think I went like twenty sixteen until eventually like twenty twenty one and hit a PR total and it had been so it's yeah, uh five, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's a. <laughs> uh, I what I'd be curious, how um you know, how important is it to you in the sense that you've obviously in that span of time you've done a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of big stuff, med school, uh, started a pretty successful business here sure. and just a lot of other stuff that's very important in life. Like how much do you care? Like, uh, were you, had you had the meat not gone well, would you have been down on it and having it gone well? Like, are you super high on it? Like where, where does it fit in for you personally? Yeah. I mean, well, uh, the simple answer is this meat, it was the best meat of my life. Just, I mean, demonstrably so because it's a PR total, right? I'm nine right. for nine. This is my 28th meet. And this is the first time I've ever gone nine for nine. 
And uh, so as far as where it ranks to me is importance or value or whatever, it's at the top. And again, to your point, I did have to, I did all this other stuff in the interim, which was great. And from a life and lifestyle and like meaningfulness, all the other stuff is great, but I still never got to scratch that itch of like, but I finally all time, regardless of equipment, regardless of gear, whatever, I PR'd my total. And that's, I've been trying to do that. And and I do love competing. I've done raw nationals a number of times. I've done big regional meets a bunch of times. I've done, you know, big money meets a bunch of times as well. And those are all, they're different because it's not necessarily about PRing, right? A PR, it's about winning. And this one was solely about, I want to beat the 2014 version of myself who was able to roll out of my bed that my, my normal bed I slept in, go down to the gym. I trained at all the time, have the homies who were judging me load the ball, you know, whatever. And yeah, everything was great on that day too. And so it's like, can I, can I replicate that somehow? And so I, yeah, to me, this is the best meet I've ever done. It does mean a lot to me, even if it was just in some cases, a backyard meet as a local I don't think meet. that matters. I don't think, I don't think I don't, so either. Yeah. We don't. Well, that, yeah, that's, that's, but you know, some people would say, well, wouldn't it mean more to you if it was at USAPL Raw Nationals or Worlds or whatever? I'm like, well, if I had to choose, yeah, sure. I would love to set a PR total at the biggest meet of the entire world. That would be fantastic too. But I also felt like I needed to do this period, like full right. stop. Mm -hmm. And so I was glad to do it here. And if I get the opportunity to compete at an even higher level, I'll do that. What's really on the docket, I'm 38. I'll be 39 next year. I'll be 40 the year after that. And I'm like, Ooh, I'll be masters. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be re masters. I'll be relevant yeah. again. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, so I think it, I, it's funny. I turned up in grand Cayman. Um, they had the North American powerlifting federations regional championship. So it's just all in North America. And, um, I was, I was coaching and I, I see Lane Norton and, uh, Michael, uh, Gar uh Garazzo. These are guys I competed with and for years and years and years. And they're like, wait, are you, are you competing? Are you in the master's division right now? Yeah. Like, not yet, guys. Don't yeah. worry, but it's it's coming. So yeah, just yeah. wait. So yeah, it would be cool to do it at a huge meet that like quote meant a lot to other people. But this this meet meant a lot to me. And uh again, going nine for nine, hitting a PR total. Uh I I could tell as soon as I did my very first squat, I was like, Yeah, I'm nervous. I'm, I'm actually yeah. like every lift. I was like, Oh, I don't know if I have any more than that. And the yeah. person handling me fortunately was like, you're strong today. The weights are moving fast. I'm going to be aggressive. So you get this total. Cause that's why you're here. And I'm like, okay, we'll just go with God and do this thing. And, uh, yeah, it worked out, but I, I did, I thought after I did my, my first bench attempt, for example, I was like, I only have two and a half kilos left. That's it. And she's, <laughs> she goes, now nah, we're going up 10. And I'm like, are you sure? And she's like, yeah, just smoke it. Just push yeah. harder this time. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I thought after my last, so. yeah, after my last warm up attempt if, for deadlifts in the warm up room, I go, I, I turn to her, I go, hey, how did that, how did that look? And she goes, fast, stupid fast. And I go, I don't know. I might miss my opener if I'm honest. <laughs> she, goes, <laughs> she goes, what's wrong with you? I was just nervous. I was just nervous because I knew that yeah. I had to be perfect in order to meet to, to PR total. So yeah, long story short, it meant a lot to me. It still does. I'm riding high. This is the best meet of my life. And uh, I'm happy I get to talk about it. So not that anyone, look, if you're listening to the Massonomics podcast and you're like, why are you guys talking about this stupid powerlifting meet with this stupid doctor? I'm like, yeah, look, I don't know either. I don't, but, but it doesn't mean a lot to me. So, you know, whatever. Well, it's because oh, it's because you went nine for nine. If you didn't, you didn't set we a PR wouldn't total, we wouldn't be having yeah, this conversation. Like, we're not you knew what was I, on the all, line. I <laughs> totally, I thought, uh, so I ripped my hand on my first deadlift attempt, right? A little bit. And I go, shoot, we should just jump to my third right now because I think I might have one pole left. And she looks, she goes, stop being an idiot. You're fine. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll do yeah. it. <laughs> like just, so I, I almost did just self-sabotage and go eight for nine and still hit a PR total. But I'm glad that I finally out of, yeah, I got that off my back, did nine for nine and uh, yeah, PR by total by, by seven pounds. Did so, you say that's your 28th meet too? Is that what you said? Meet, 28th wow, meet. Wow, that is a that lot is, of, that that's, a an, lot. that's an impressive resume. Do you, that's really uh walking the walk, I guess I would say. Do you feel like uh, maybe for Barbell Medicine's case or for any reason, do you feel like you have to do that in order for uh, – um, did you – do you either feel like that now or did you ever have that feeling like you had to do that? 
Yeah, I've definitely had that feeling probably between like right when I was graduating medical school, like so 2015 into 2017, um, mainly because competing then it took a lot more out of me, it, it, not just from like like energy that not really that, but like planning because it's like, OK, I have to take boards here. I'll be on this rotation. That's not really I conducive to training for a meet or traveling for a meet, for example. So I had to like I had to plan things and it really did. It took a lot out of me. And uh, I started getting this sense like what if at some point I I can't compete for like a whole year or two years. And that's like barring any injury or anything else going on like that. So I, I definitely have felt that pressure before. Uh, I kind of got over that because honestly, at Barbell Medicine, we coach a wide spectrum of people. Like I mean, coaching is part of the business, uh, rehab stuff for injuries and stuff. That's a bigger part. And then, you know, obviously the educational uh, material for CME, CEUs, that stuff's a, another whole part. But coaching, I would say 20% of our clientele actually compete. Right. Some of them at the international level, for sure. But we also have like, you know, people in their ninth decade of life. We have people, you know, 80 year olds that are, we're coaching. Uh, one of the people we just started coaching, uh, like is a very, uh, High, they they're a high level person with the FDA, and so they're but then they had COVID and they lost a bunch of muscle mass or whatever, and they randomly turned up at one of our seminars had having never lifted before, right? And so we're like coaching them like how to build muscle, get their muscle mass back, how to get stronger or whatever. And so like we do the whole spectrum, and so those people don't care. They're like, oh, you deadlift seven hundred pounds. I don't even what I I don't even know what that is. It doesn't make any sense. Right, right, right. right. But the but all, like for the social media folks, for for people who are super into powerlifting, yeah, it would be weird if we were in that powerlifting space without actually competing. And so I've definitely felt that pressure, although I I do admittedly feel it less now cuz I'm like I've already done this stuff, you know. Right. And for those for the people out there they're like, "Oh, I went on open powerlifting, there's only you know, 18 meets that you have records for. Well, how do you use 28? Where does that number come from? Well, I I've done a 10, 10 or more strength lifting meets. So instead of the bench press, right. it's the squat, right, right. the overhead press and yep. the deadlift and open powerlifting. Like, well, that's not powerlifting. I'm like, I agree. So don't put, don't put my numbers in there, but I did, I did uh, a bunch of those do, meets too. Do they record those somewhere? Like those are probably, those probably exist somewhere. Does strength lifting rec have a database or something? They don't have, uh, yeah. I mean, you think about the time before open powerlifting. I think right. uh, it was uh, Sean Stangle, I think. Sean, I think he was the guy who kind of came up with the open powerlifting idea. He's like, why is there no real database? I'm like, well, powerlifting right. watch exists. And right. then we were all like, right. uh, kind of. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, sort of, yeah. Yeah. So, all of the results from the strength lifting meets are published. But they're not collective, like collated in like a database. Right. There's no, right. There's no open stronglifts.com sitting Correct. there. Correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, the guy who used to, I guess, promote all of the meets or organize all of the meets, um, Tom Campitelli, he works for Barbell Medicine now. He basically sold or, you know, gave away what he was doing with the, the Strength Lifting mm -hmm. Federation to another group. I think it's the USSF, United States Strength Lifting Federation. Although now, instead of it being squat, press, deadlift, it's press and deadlift. So it's really just a push-pull sort of thing. Okay. And I thought about re-entering because I thought it would be cool to do like a 1,000-pound push-pull total, total with yeah, a press. Right, right. <laughs> Right. And now I'm just, I'm like, am I just making this stuff up? Like, would that be <laughs> yeah. cool? Like, I'm like, <laughs> go after, set these goalposts somewhere. Like, yeah, I can hit that one. I'll do it. Yeah. What, uh, do, you, what do you think the highest push pull is for press deadlift? Like if you had to, mm. like, uh, uh, they're What's kind of uh, they kind of battle each other in a way too. By uh, typically, what you think someone's built for, they mm. sort of are. Uh, yeah, but like Eddie Hall. Like yeah, I was Eddie gonna say Hall, like some Eddie of the strongmen though yeah, would have crazy yeah. numbers though. Is could probably right. press yeah close to four hundred pounds, and they can yes. probably deadlift 800, 900 or whatever. And so yeah. it's probably yeah. I would guess in that twelve to fourteen hundred pound range is mm -hmm. probably. So I'm like, look, if I could do a thousand. Yeah, and the I'm, ratio I'm just, there, the deadlift is so important too, though, right? Like if just in those <laughs> with those two lifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The difference between being good yeah. and great at deadlift is like four or five hundred pounds, where yeah, right in, yeah. in the, you're in the spread press on overhead 100. press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If I have like a PR day on the press, I'm gonna press three hundred. Uh -huh. right? right. If I have a bad day, I'm gonna press two eighty five. Uh -huh. You know, but on a deadlift, you it could be the difference between six sixty and seven forty or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which right. is a huge, huge gap. So yeah, I'd, you know, look, if you guys ever decide to sponsor a powerlifting meet or a strength meet or whatever. Or start our own federation. Or yeah, look, you could do <laughs> there's that not too. A, which there's not enough of, let me first of all say we need if there's one thing we need, it's more federations. Yes. Push pull, press, <laughs> deadlift. And further, you have to stipulate can't be sumo. 
Just for look, if yeah. you want to be a jerk about it, you just yeah, you yeah. can't. You got to pull conventional. So. Well, you got to make some hard lines in the sand. You know, you can't just let everything slide. So that's, that's yeah. Uh, you guys are you are men of principle. You can't just that's you know. right. Yeah, so we do have principles over here. We've got uh, a number of 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 small little games we have for you to play in this episode. Hell yeah! For, let's the do first it. one being uh, something we're pulling out of our vault that we've played in the past. It's called supplements, real or fake. Okay, and uh, we'll have a, a few supplements, and it's your job to to try and decide if the this is a in fact a real supplement <laughs> that can be that is sold and can be purchased, or if it is a fake supplement. Okay. <laughs> and like, uh, yeah, Barbell right. Medicine, you you sell you have some supplements, correct? Uh, yeah, so you can have... you're, you're a bit of an expert, yeah, then, connoisseur so we'll, of supplements. Yeah, right. All right, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, we'll use that term expert charitably. No, I <laughs> I think yeah, with respect to evidence based supplements, I feel like I have a good uh, beat on the you know my finger right. on the pulse there but there's stuff that's out there that i've definitely never heard of and so i'm excited to to get yeah. owned here by you guys. Okay, yeah, just, so. just a few of them here first one little shits little oh. shits i'm gonna say that's fake that is real it's a constipation <laughs> relief supplement i'm being a lit that's a little bit cheating it's okay. a li little shts they do a little bit of an innuendo on the label there uh, uh so that that's a real supplement but it's not okay. the chem. It's obviously not the chemical. Uh, yeah. So it's probably some mineral oil or some type of thing, like a laxative sure. or whatever. Yeah, and I don't know what it actually. We're not. First of all, we're not also whether these are real or fake. We're not necessarily promoting the supplement. <laughs> to be clear, that it does yeah, exist. Yeah. Well, fact, it exists. you missed it. This episode is brought to you by Little Shits, though. Little Shits is sponsoring. Yeah, Lincoln Bio Shit yes. Ten for ten percent off. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Real or fake? Peppy Pete's. Pecker pills. Oh my god! A lot god. of alliteration on this one. Peppy Pete's Pecker pills. I feel like you find that when you're driving like through the middle of nowhere at like a Seven Eleven. Yeah. I'm gonna say that's real. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Know. Yeah, that one's fake. That one's <laughs> fake. So you're all for two. We have got two left. You but can still get fifty. Also, go fifty. You're also serving as our focus group right now. So we, <laughs> you thought it was real. So we're gonna mark that one possibly. Yeah. Look into some formulations here. Barbell Medicine has a new uh, supplement coming out. Yeah. <laughs> so that name's. Up, up for grabs here, too. Yeah, need to hire uh, a guy named Pete. Yeah, all right. All right, one more kind of in the vein of that one, actually. It's uh, Hercules's. Uh, I'm, I'm tough with, uh, with uh, the possessive apostrophe words. Yes. That end, yeah, uh, Hercules' hidden helper. Oh, my God. I, like, again, the name sounds like it could be true, <laughs> but just I'm, I'm going to do, like, the test-taking skills and yeah. say, all right, it, it's, it can't be real. Correct. That one is yeah, that one is fake. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 This is how I got through med school, guys. So <laughs> yeah. like when you don't know the answer, think of what, what is it is the... and then choose the opposite. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh we actually there was some um mental gymnastics before as we ordered these. Tommy and I talked beforehand, what's the correct order here that would best possibly throw someone off, you know? Oh, we, okay. Whether uh so we were trying we we're trying to order them in a way that uh, may may make it more difficult, but last one to see if you can go fifty percent. But, but trumpet tablets. Come on, <laughs> this has got to be like a semethicone or something. Uh, I'm gonna say that's that's real. Yeah, uh, that one's fake. Also, <laughs> okay, so, all right. Yeah. Well, look again. Barbell medicine is a new supplement. If you want to get yes. your toot on, you buy yeah. our <laughs> butt trumpet. We'll. Uh, it's so, not a medical device. It's actually a supplement. Yeah. Yeah. So you 25%. Uh, we'll say this is like baseball. Batting 250 is not that bad. Yeah, in the postseason. All right. I'll yeah. take that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Hire, so, hire me. Diamond. Not bad at all. Yeah. You, uh, when you were in med school, this is a question I was wondering about. This is a meme actually you see sometimes or like it's a, a statement you see people make that are trying to be funny. Mm -hmm. They'll say, just remember uh, when you're at the doctor today. Someone in med school was last in their class, you know, totally. like someone that's a doctor was was the worst person in their class that that at least made the minimum barrier uh, to graduate from your anecdotal experience or just like you being in the field and understanding it. Is that a valid uh, comment to make? Like, are there people that actually pass, you know, that make it to the finish line and um, you would be concerned about that if it was you visiting them or is there so many barriers to even get to that point mm. that if you've made it that far you're probably decent like what what is the i don't and i don't have a i don't have an opinion because i don't have a i don't not knowledgeable enough to have an tanner opinion, hasn't so been to medical school yet no so. no, not God, yet. no not yet that's well, he's working on it. And, and, 
<laughs> but why I asked that too is because like, so sure, I went to high school. There's a lot of people that passed high school that they bear. I don't even like. Yeah, sure, they <laughs> passed. Okay, I went to undergraduate school. There's quite a few, there less, but quite a few people that passed undergraduate school that I'm like, I guess they got a diploma. Mm. Uh, in my master's program, there was a lot less. Like from that was there was a bigger jump there when I went to my master's program. There wasn't very many. And I think it's just like a pre-selection thing. There, like there aren't people that even wanted to do it. That, uh, um, like, there's a, so, I don't know. That's just what I've noticed uh, in my experience. So that's why I wonder in med school, what do you feel like? Yeah. Uh, now, so again, some of the numbers I'll throw out are from when I went through medical school. So I, I went into medical school in 2012. I got out in 2016. So this data is admittedly dated, but I'll give you try to put some facts behind this and kind of give you my perspective. So to get into medical school, something like 100,000 people apply in the United States every year and less than 10% of get in, like actually get into medical school. So already the selection bias of the 100,000 or so that apply and the 10% who make it in, like you're okay. So already those folks have some academic success that makes them stand out relative to the other people who try to apply. So that's thing one. Then there are, as you alluded to, there's so many barriers, as you call them, or I would just say benchmarks that you have to kind of meet along the way. You have three sets of national boards, step one, step two, step three, and MD, and then there's different ones for uh, osteopathic physicians. And then after that, you have to go through a residency, and then in residency, you're tested every year to stay within residency, make sure you're meeting your milestones, and then after residency, you have to sit for boards and pass those to be a board certified physician. So to your question, are there people who have gone through all of that, passed all of the boards and are board certified who are not operating up to the standard of a another physician or you know that sort of minimum level of, of competence? Yes, there's a few. But that's an, those are those folks are outliers, and in general, that's the whole point of these boards is to sort of make sure that you're meeting those minimum criteria and able to practice medicine safely. But you know, people slip through the cracks all the time. Now, when I went into medical school, my first year, 2012, we were the first year at our school where they no longer had a class ranking. Prior, the years before, they would rate people like, oh, you were in the top five percent, ten percent, whatever, and ascribe different sort of labels to them, you know, uh, based on their academic prowess. And then when I went through, it was pass fail. So effectively, you didn't really know how you stacked up relative to everybody else. You just knew if you passed or failed. And so one of the sayings in my medical school and certainly other medical schools was P's equal MDs. So passes equal MDs. <laughs> okay. The, the biggest kind of takeaway I got, not only going through medical school, but then post-medical school training and residency is that somebody's academic success in those preclinical years where their grades are all recorded or whatever is not very predictive of how they're going to do in residency, actually caring for patients, and not very predictive in how they do with actual patients once they're out as a board certified physician. Because there are a lot of soft skills that really tend to correlate much, much more, uh, much higher than, oh, well, did you honor your immunology course, you know, 10 years ago? So Yes, there are obviously, just like in any other profession, there are people at the bottom end of the bell curve and there are people at the top end of the bell curve. But as far as predicting which one, it's not going to be from their preclinical grades, from their you know residency marks. It might be based on their board certification. So a physician who's board certified, you definitely would want to identify those folks. Probably something that's more telling, though, is the recency in which they've graduated. And so we get a question all the time, like, how would you go about picking a physician for yourself? And for me, I'd want somebody who's graduated residency, passed boards within the last 10 years, and is affiliated with an academic institution. So they they have a university system that they're practicing medicine through, because that means they're going to work with residents, they're going to work with med students, they're going to be consistently and constantly exposed to the latest evidence, the latest practices, or whatever. They're not just cowboys out on their own <laughs> trying to keep up, which is the problem, right? If you're in private practice by yourself, kind of insulated from changes that are happening, it's very, very difficult to stay up to date. And so one of the statistics is like, Okay, if evidence comes out showing like a dramatic or significant change in clinical practice, how long does that take to get into clinical practice? And it's like 17 years, 17 years. And a lot of that is generational, like however you trained going through school, um, kind of that's that's what you know. And so to change that later on, you either have to be plugged into an acad academic institution or be aware of this otherwise. And it's difficult to do if you're on your own. 
So I would want to pick a doctor that's like recently graduated, uh, you know, because they're likely fresher, but particularly with their information. And again, if they're with an academic institution, it means they constantly have to kind of update what they're doing rather than somebody I've been in practice for 40 years. And it's like, when's the last time you saw somebody under the age of 30, <laughs> just like, like who was in medical training? They're like, never, I hate those kids. I'm like, I mean, me too. But like, I think if I had yeah, to yeah. pick a physician, that's who it would be. So yeah, there are physicians who graduated at the bottom of the class, so to speak, but otherwise passed all their, uh, met all their milestones, passed all the boards or whatever, who are great physicians just absolutely great. And there are people who are at the top of their class who are not so good. And a lot of that comes down to things that aren't really tested, soft skills, uh, behavioral change, counseling, motivational interviewing, things of that nature, which for better or worse are not really examined. Like you don't have to be good at talking to patients to get through all this sort of stuff. And so if you go and see a physician and you don't have good rapport, like you can't develop a rapport, great rapport with them, might not be the physician for you. Even if they're like, oh, I double board certified and I've got, you know, I was top of my class and this, that, and the other. It doesn't mean that they're dumb. It just means that they're probably not a great advocate for your own sort of healthcare. Uh, and so I would try to find somebody else. That uh, that feels like a very nuanced answer. <laughs> it's a drinking <laughs> game. Yeah, well. It's something more black and white here we can yeah. work with. <laughs> Uh, to answer your question, yes, there are dumb doctors out there. Uh, some of them were at the bottom of the class, but some of them were at the top of the class too. Yeah. So there you go. You're still, still the master of nuance though. That's every time I hear the word, I turn around like somebody's trolling me. And then I realize that it's actually part of the English language. <laughs> Other people, people actually just use that word. word. Yeah. Oh, Was that at, uh, um, you said, uh, North American, Powerlifting uh, Federation. Was yeah. that where it was you, Mike T, and Bryce uh, from yes. Calgary, that picture of you three? Who would win in a pose down between the three of you? What would the place be there, do you think? Okay, so I just think, like, <laughs> if you're thinking about, like, motor patterning, motor patterning, learning, skill acquisition, or whatever, Mike T has us all beat. Like, the dude, it, it, he's just such a technician with everything. I feel like, I mean, honestly, his pre-pose routine would be a little excessive, right? Be a lot of breaths. It's like he's swallowing fish all over the place. But then he would just hit the best double buy that you've ever, that you've ever seen. The, you know, the weird thing about that picture. So I got when I posted that picture the first time on my Instagram, my DMs overfloweth with comments. They're like, I've never seen you look that small in your whole life. And I'm like, I, look, I've never felt that small yeah. in my whole life. Like Mike T, I think, well, him and Bryce both competed in the same weight class, the 120 kilo class of so 264. And I yeah. walk around 205 to 210 or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, that's the difference. What like 50 to 60 pounds at yeah. the same height looks so like. So you guys are all relatively similar height then too? Are you, are you almost, almost exactly. Okay. Almost exactly. And here's the wildest thing. I started working with Mike T. He was my coach from 2013 to 2022-ish. Bryce also started working with Mike in 2013. Right. And him and I were the same weight, like <laughs> yeah. the, ex the exact same. Somehow Bryce can squat, you know, 700 and whatever raw yeah. and he can deadlift 800 raw right. and, you know, and I'm like... I Bryce, have just gained the weight. Yeah, Bryce does have the classic <laughs> video though. I think I think or Instagram yeah, or something where it's, it's him walking out to do his like first ever squat, you know, weighing, I don't know, probably like 185. And then yeah. his like last one he did at Worlds. And it's like, oh yeah, there's like 90 pounds difference between these two photos. Dude. Yeah. I started work. I worked with him uh, briefly when he went from I think he, he was 95 kilos. So what is that? 210, something like that. Yeah. Uh, and then we worked together as he was going up in weight class. And I think we ended, we stopped working together. He was like 115, 116, something like that. So it was pretty close to his current body weight. But yeah, this transformation is absolutely insane, right? Mm -hmm. And so we go, we kind of rib each other back and forth. I'm like, man, if I could just be as big as you, I would be, <laughs> I'd be so much stronger. You know, and Mike's got to be disappointed that I was one of his clients too. <laughs> and I never, I didn't get as strong as you did. Yeah, and he's, yeah. like, he, he's like, yeah, well, you have better abs than I do. And I'm like, that's true. The dude's that's do appreciate true. the abs yeah. too. Yeah. So that's... <laughs> that is true. I just, it was isn't, a... isn't there like a body weight though, where you guys feel like your face, that all the weight just goes to your face? Because for me, anything mm. over like 210, I just feel like I turn into Dr. Pac-Man. Like I, my head just grows bigger. I can't wear the same hats anymore. I'm like, what's wrong with my face? Do I yeah. carry it? Like, uh, that's definitely a thing. Yeah, that yeah. definitely happens. If you were a professional wrestler. Oh boy. What would your finishing move be? And why would it be the Feigen bomb? <laughs> that's, you know, that's uh, I, 
this is not the first time that somebody's asked me what would be my character or like something about okay. professional wrestling. And yeah. I, I think I would take over the now defunct character that is the Hebrew hammer. I'm not oh. a religious person, but my family right. is Jewish. So Hebrew right. hammer makes sense. I always thought that I would have like tablets, like Moses, <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I'd be something involved with that. Yeah. And I mm-hmm. feel like if I took the tablets, <laughs> turn to the crowd and then yeah. smash them. That could be yeah. the Feigen bomb. The Feigen yeah. bomb. Yeah. The real yeah. fire and yeah. brimstone type thing. You know, you'd be kind of like the opposite <laughs> of the Undertaker. You'd be like on the other oh, side. Oh yeah, of right, yeah. right. It's the resurrection. Right. Yeah. 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 Like... <laughs> well, I don't actually know if that fits either, though. <laughs> no, no, yeah, 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 maybe too soon, too soon. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> two thousand years later. <laughs> yeah, we need to get a historian on this to figure out like. Yeah. Our story, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. have actually a rabbi and a priest on next week to really <laughs> a rabbi and a priest walk into the Massonomics podcast. <laughs> yeah, uh, see what happened. Uh, uh yeah. well, this is a question we've been we've been having this conversation with a whole bunch of uh various guests we've been on and people we've been on their podcasts and getting everyone's take on this. It's an interesting question. It's an interesting for us to compare how different people think about it. So here's the scenario. You're uh you're you're training in uh in your gym there. A lifter walks in, you've never seen them before. You don't know anything about their training history. You just, you're seeing them that day for the first time. And for whatever reason, your task is to allow them to perform one lift. And uh, the goal with them performing that one lift is you to most accurately gauge their overall strength. All you're going to get to see and know about them is their performance on this one lift, this Mm. one exercise. You want to be able to say, I'm making my best most educated guests at their overall strength because of it. What lift are you going to have them perform? Ooh. Okay. So basically I get to see them do one thing, max out, yeah. and then I have to be able to like predict how they do on other lifts. Yeah. Okay. Yes, exactly. I think I think it's gonna be the squat. I think it's gonna be the squat and and here's why. So cause other people would probably say deadlift. They're like, okay, maybe less technique. And I get to see like what's their max strength on a particular lift that's gonna clue me in. But like deadlift specialists kind of throw that whole thing out the window, right? With long arms or whatever. The squat yep. tells me like more about what their training's been like for years. Somebody with a really strong squat, they've been obviously training that for a long time. Nobody's leverages are really set up for like squatting, like in very some sort of compromise. So like, you know compared to like a deadlift specialist or a bench press specialist, so to speak. And so that's going to tell me not only about their training, but also like how strong their, you know, certainly how strong their legs are, but also their whole body and on some level. And then uh, I can also kind of see based on their squat mechanics, like do they actually have short arms, long arms, long femurs, short femurs? Like I could probably gauge something to do with their upper body strength. Uh, and further squats are just so damn hard that like, if somebody's a really good squatter, I'm like, this person likes to suffer. This person likes to, and so I'm now I'm kind of scared. I'm like, geez, this person (laughs) is a freak. Whereas, I mean, deadlifts are hard too. No, no question about it. But again, like, I just feel like the deadlift specialist that, you know, whoever those folks are at the top end of that bell curve, they could just confuse me more than what I would learn from a squat. Do people, is that the most, two most common lifts squats and deadlifts? So, yeah, or front squat, or front squat for, and foot press or something like that. Well, yeah. So for what it's worth, Tommy and I is both the the first time this was posed to us, we basically did the exact same thing that you just said right there. We say a lot of people would say deadlift. Our thought it's not deadlift uh, mm-hmm. for the exact just exactly mm-hmm. what you said, and yeah. we think it's the squat and that same same exact thing. Although a lot of people do think deadlift, but. In my opinion, still, there's a lot of different ways to skin this cat, but I, I still think that that's not a great answer because of the outliers, you know, like because of it just, it's, yeah, it's the just other, such a, the other thing is too, like if I t- see how much somebody squats, let's say they squat 500, right? I'm going to predict that likely their deadlift is somewhere between 550 and 700 right? Like mm-hmm. some sort of zone. But if I see somebody deadlift 700, I don't know what they're going to squat, yeah, you know, right. particularly if they yep. do it sumo on a deadlift bar with straps, something like that. Then I'm kind of like, shoot, they might squat only 400. I've mm-hmm. seen that. I've seen that happen in real life. Uh, you could maybe make the case like front squat, it, like knuckles, Greg knuckles might say like front squat. He's like, he loves the front squat. And he's like, I think that's a harder exercise in some ways than like the back squat. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said something to that effect, but also don't come at me, bros, but like mischaracterizing what Greg said. He's just like, I think he said that 
people, whatever people can front squat and push press, those are like two big tests of their like absolute strength. And there's some skill in there too. So you kind of see like how athletic they are. Um, yeah, I just feel like I can get closer on predicting other stuff from the squat than I can do in reverse. If that makes sense. Interestingly, I bet nobody probably says bench press. Right. Or overhead. <laughs> well, Nobody has ever said bench press. Okay. There's they, never, there's never they? been one. I don't I, think so. Okay. I, is I, anybody I said an upper body exercise? Well, yeah, period? I guess what, 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 what gets into more, uh, like some people have really analyzed it deeply and like they get into more uh, otter, li- like mm, our yeah. initially, we thought about it basically as the power where we look at it through the power lifting lens kind of, totally. you know, and, uh, we've had a lot of people that don't look at it through that lens and, um, like Mike, Mike, Dr. Mike uh, Isretel, he said the continental clean and press is what he came to okay. on his. Uh, Dave Tate said the, correct me if I'm wrong, Tommy, an elevated trap bar deadlift. I believe that's what he said. A high handle trap yeah. bar deadlift was his take on that. Uh, we've had um, several farmers well, carry. Farmers carry was popular with for a few people. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah I've heard the a uh, yoke. A yoke walk come up a few times actually a yoke uh yoke carry yeah what can you i guess i'm trying to think like i it would really depend how like what you're trying to predict i guess right yeah and, and so what i'm i guess what i'm getting at is that uh and not to say that these people are wrong like i could be we could actually run this test we could run an experiment and try to right. figure out like like just sample a bunch of people and then pull all these expert coaches uh and then see like well, yeah, which one does uh, is most predictive based on an expert's eye, uh, so to speak. But it's like like the continental clean, right? So having I've actually done the continental clean. I've never trained it for very long. I had a one strongman competition and uh, there was a continental clean. Well, that's all I could do. I couldn't figure out how to like do any other variation of like an axle bar, right. clean, whatever. Right. And I think I worked up to 275. And, and I don't know if that's good or bad. But I also don't know that if you saw me struggling with a 275 pound continental clean, that you would predict I could squat 640. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you're like, ah, the dude looks pretty unathletic. Also, <laughs> like, he's kind of small. So, yeah, uh, he could squat 500. And I'm like, well, if you say I can squat 500, but I can really squat 640, is that close? Was enough? it a very good yeah. accurate? Yeah. What, how well did, well, yeah. And right, I think, right. I mean, to me, part of the, 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 I guess maybe problem with the question or even the scenario is that if you are talking within a powerlifting lens, you know, within, within the yeah, perspective yeah. of powerlifting, it's easier if everyone could agree, like, yeah, we're, we're narrowing it down to these three lifts. It's when you open it up to every lift possible, then it starts to just get harder because it's like there's so many <laughs> lifts that people don't do yeah. that it, it's really the scenario is becoming this big abstract thing outside you know it's being less practical yeah the other flaw i think too that we've 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 come to understand through other people's analysis of it is we also looked at it through the percept through the lens of these people have a basic understanding of a, a basic level of strength training because some pushback we got on saying the squat well the squat is too technical of a lift you know someone if you're take pulling completely untrained lifter a off of the street not even lifter a just average dude a off the street he can't squat because he doesn't, he doesn't know, how, know to. how to do that sure, yeah. and but i'm like well we that's not our original that's not the way we looked at the question either we were we were thinking about people that go to the gym and have a basic basic level of fitness yeah very yeah, basic level skills. of being able to yeah, yeah. I guess though, if, if, you know, you did, if you were opening up to everybody, not just trained people, just, you know, whatever, um, I don't know that they would underperform on the squat relative to most other exercises that you would be curious to like predict what their performance would be. Cause all of those have skill components too. Sure. The elevated trap bar deadlift is a lower skill thing, but because there are less moving parts, there are less sort of demands on like coordinated movement at high while producing high amounts of force i think it just tells you less right so the squat yeah. tells you more right even though it is more complex but this, this goes back to like even how they assess strength in like research studies right they're like okay does this particular training protocol make you stronger and it depends on how you test the thing right, right. so the people will if be it's like a leg extension um 
like that's Check. I've heard that as a test before, like in totally or even iso even like isometric leg extension. Like, can you hold this position or like a chest press on a machine, you know, machine like a hammer strength thing being better than like, you know, a bench press, which is more skill based. But so an interesting study was like they compared uh, machine based training. They did a squat on a Smith machine, a bench press on a Smith machine and a deadlift type thing on a Smith machine and compared it to barbell training and saw like who who gained more strength. The people who did the barbell lifts versus the people who did the Smith machine lifts. But the interesting nuance here, so to speak, <laughs> was that they tested each group how they trained. So they tested the people on a Smith machine with a Smith machine squat, with a Smith machine bench press, with a Smith machine deadlift, and they tested the barbell people on barbell lifts. And they were looking at, okay, what percentage was the relative improvement? Was it the same between both groups or was there a clear demonstrable benefit to training with barbells? And uh, on average, the result was the same between groups, meaning that they both improved their strength by about 20-ish percent. Uh, and so it really just depends how you're testing strength, right? If you did all this training in the world, whether it's barbell-based, machine-based or whatever, but then the test is something completely off the wall, like, I don't know, uh, mid mid-thigh isometric rack pull and you're like right well, well fuck i don't know like <laughs> if one's clearly better than the other it's certainly better yeah. than not training but right. if you wanted to plan a training program that transfers the best to that well you better be doing some sort of pulls from the mid thigh you know so yeah it does get it does get into the weeds and i think i could probably hear arguments for any particular type of lift but for me i still think i go back to some sort of squat pattern only because i think it tells me more about the person's leverages the way that they move their skills, you know, their skills at the time. And then also, uh, again, just how they've been training or not training somebody who can't squat. I'm like, well, I don't think they can deadlift. Right. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Somebody who can't squat. I'm like, I, they, if they're not training their squat, I don't know how much they're training their bench press, for example. And sure. A, a yoke carry look, yoke carries hard and you gotta be strong to do it too. So I don't know that they're going to be like disproportionately great at carrying the yoke compared to their squat. I, I don't know. But again, I could hear arguments for all this stuff and, uh, I don't see anything wrong with what other people have answered. I just, you're, you guys are exactly right. Looking at it through the lens of powerlifting, I think I just always end up back there. I'm like, all right, well, what can they squat? What can they bench press? What can they deadlift? And is their total higher than mine? Because if they, if the total is higher than mine, they're on steroids. And that's, <laughs> that's the great that's no, that's the That's the most important. That might be the best takeaway I've ever, that's the conclusion <laughs> that's come from any of these questions is, yes, that is the golden rule in yeah, powerlifting. Right. Yes. The, big, the, the real test when you meet a new powerlifter you should, you meet somebody and they identify themselves as a power lifter, start the stopwatch thing on your phone or your watch or whatever, <laughs> and see how long it takes for them to, for them to volunteer their numbers in, in passing. Yeah. Like just, yeah, it's yeah. Gonna, I'm going to guess the over under is somewhere between <laughs> 120 to 240 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> just like they're yep. gonna, It's going to come up. They're going to be like casually. It's just like when a, a woman, you know, you're talking to and they, they slip in, I have a boyfriend, like yeah. at some point, you know, a power lifter is like, yeah. So anyway, my last meet, I squatted 600 and you're like, oh. <laughs> We were talking about the weather, yeah. but hey, thanks for that useful bit of information. <laughs> yeah. You uh, brought up something there that um, this was a suggestion from you have a our boyfriend? Discord, our supporting members. <laughs> uh, you're familiar, yeah. You're familiar with uh, the uh, F Mary Kill game. Yeah, yeah. This oh, is. Can, uh, I cuss? can I not cuss? Is this no, we can. Joke? We can cuss. I just. <laughs> I yeah, just okay. I we, we always God, we I, always say this is uh what what do we what what rate what rating is our show Tommy uh we, well there's no official rating but usually when you say yeah. PG thirteen you know people okay. say and, oh you're limited to like what two fucks in an episode yeah but. we, <laughs> we, ah, we just over. use our we're, we just use our f's like just spare like I'll, some episodes I'll say it ten times and some I will not say it at all so there is no rule yeah uh, right. you it's uh who, who do you think has the record for cursing the most on uh Mike uh, Doctor Mike. Well, he has the record for the most well, ridiculously obscene, vulgar, yeah, obscene stuff yeah. that he's gone into. I mean, for the most in-depth blowjob <laughs> fantasy experience. When like, he gets with us, God. he goes like <laughs> normal Mike. I don't know if what we bring out in him, but he brings he like goes that times like yeah. ten of yeah, what he yeah, normally yeah. does. The like, last episode on, we had on, we were just asking him how his YouTube got better, and he gave us this elaborate <laughs> story how he went to the the Google boardroom and gave there, yeah. everyone in the boardroom a blowjob before, wow. and then he's like, and then they lost like up, a fifteen minute long story. For round two, yeah, it was this <laughs> big, long, elaborate story just to be just to not give us an answer, which was hilarious. But well, maybe he was, maybe it was truthful. You don't know. <laughs> that's that's the long con is like everyone thinks I'm joking, but this is really what we did. I was honest, yeah. yeah. All right, F FMK, what are we, what yeah? Are we, uh, what are we doing here? SARMs, okay, peptides, and uh, 
I guess ATP supplements oh, or like geez. injectable <laughs> ATP <laughs> supplements or something like that. Farms, peptide, <laughs> ATP. All right. <laughs> F F ATP just like just I, That's yeah. easy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, at some point if evidence emerges that administering it some way outside of a clinical setting is useful m- maybe that could be something for a sports performance advantage but at this point yeah, hard pass. Uh, <laughs> kill. I would probably kill peptides at this particular point, given the lack of data showing efficacy and safety. So, and people will, anytime I've been injured or somebody gets injured, they're like, hey, what do you think about BPC 157 or TB 500 or yeah. something, something else? And I'm like, yeah, unfortunately, we just don't have great data in humans. And they're like, well, what about this study? I'm like, yeah, so that was actually in mice. Uh, you know, <laughs> or like, what about this one? I'm like, yeah, so that's a phase two clinical trial that's showing some safety data potentially in humans, but not necessarily efficacy and certainly not superiority to existing stuff that we have. So we're just waiting. Right. And the other the thing I'll say about peptides as well is like when you're getting this stuff, where do you think it's being manufactured? Because all of these things are patented by a pharmaceutical company who's actively investing millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars in research and development and clinical trials. And you think they're just giving this recipe to people and saying, yeah, if you want to make it in a bathtub and, and, and no, put it it's, vials, it's the like Walter it. Whites of the world. They were former right. brilliant chemists that are now, <laughs> now yeah, taking to the black market with their skills. Yeah. One high school <laughs> chemistry class and yeah, you too can make gear. I'm sure everyone's got access to a mass yeah. spectrometer or, you know, whatever to yeah, make you just sure got to know the right guy. He's got a lab somewhere. I, <laughs> totally. I trust the ethics of of, of, uh, of drug dealers in general. Yeah. And then I guess I would marry SARMs, although I will say that By we're going to have, pre- have a prenup uh, in there. <laughs> the thing with SARMs is like there's actually some phase three clinical trials showing efficacy in humans and safety in humans. Uh, that said, in general, the evidence is not that good and we don't have enough data compared to other anabolic agents that we have showing that they're a clearly superior choice. Now, that whole line of science is super interesting, in my opinion, and I'll be curious to see like where it goes. In fact, oh my gosh, I I don't know the name of this thing. Austin and I like got pinged. Um, we have both have like similar search terms on PubMed. And so when something pops up that we are like set like a, a notification for, ooh, this cool thing was like, yeah, people lose fat mass, gain muscle mass, and gain strength. And it's been in development since 2009. And it's like, they've just published a recent study, a phase three clinical trial showing like pretty strong efficacy. And we're like, and it's a SARM. And we're like, well, we'll see. Maybe in another 10 years, it'll be on the market. But it's the same mm-hmm. sort of limitations as peptides. They're just closer, if that makes sense. But I always wonder like why people, they like go to SARMs. They're like, yeah, no, that, I'm gonna do that. Instead of test or instead of, you know, whatever things that we know about and have known right. about for years and years and years, uh, and that you can actually get that, it made in a pharmaceutical grade lab. Like, you know, you can get a prescription for, uh, they're like, nah, 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 this website, I don't know where it's coming from. I can get this. I I think it's the injections. If I'm honest, Mm. I think it's the injections, which I understand a lot of patients, uh, that we've dealt with, uh, previously who were like wanting to do testosterone replacement therapy. They're like, look, I'm all on board. I am hypogonadal. You've seen the test. You've seen my results. Like, is there any type of administration where I don't have to inject myself? It's like, sure. We have deodorant, there's gels, there are pellets, there are other ways to administer the stuff, but those things aren't really accessible to folks trying to purchase anabolics without a prescription or right. like from another person. And so they're like, I can just drink the SARMs. I can mix in my pre-workout. They make, yeah. it's like they got Jack 3d from some Russian website and then they mix a little SARM <laughs> in there. It's just, it's just wild. It's like, uh, and that these things are ending up in pre-workout supplements too. Like, I can't tell you how many people have popped, uh, in, in USAPL and, and IPF, uh, for SARMs. And it's like, were you taking these things standalone or were they actual contaminants in a right. particular pre-workout mm-hmm. supplement? And they, these people claim, ah, oh, it's in a, must've been a pre-workout. This Osterine thing was in a pre-workout. I was like, did you notice that you were just getting much stronger? Like, well, yeah, it's just know. a really it's amazing, really pre- good caffeine. ca- caffeinated pre- pre-workout. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Like, look, if you cycle off your pre-workout or you, you know, whatever, <laughs> miss it for a few weeks and, and you're just trying you to get-, get by with like coffee and like bad things are happening to you, it's like, it's like hey, maybe you check the, the pre-workout. Maybe it was juiced up. And, and people say, well, what's the problem with that? You just, pro- you have a problem with performance enhancing drugs. And I'm like, 
no. I mean, pretty much everything we do is performance enhancing. We train, that's performance enhancing. You might see a sports psychologist, that's performance enhancing. We try to sleep, eat right. All those things are performance enhancing. I can't draw the line somewhere where I'm like, this is bad and this is acceptable. Uh, I just think that if you don't know what you're taking, you don't know the amount that you're taking, the dosage, and you don't know the safety profile, you're really just doing this, you know, blind. And that is problematic. That's where I think the health issues start to arise here. Um, and we, in sport, people do this under a cloak of secrecy because it's either banned from sport or it's in society, it's kind of looked down upon. And so people are like, I can't go to my doctor and talk about this. I can't go to any sort of trusted health care professional to like ma- monitor me. And so they're just like doing it. And they're like, oh, shit, I have liver failure. Now what? It's like – uh yeah that's yeah. a bad outcome that's a bad outcome so i don't want to scare anybody people are like oh, dude you just went from zero to 100 i'm like yeah but this happens like it, there are you know hundreds of case reports every year with liver failure due to you know supplements over-the-counter supplements and it's like you don't think this could potentially be uh, something we see with sarms if if there's a wider uptake of those things certainly so um yeah anyway that's my FMA, fmk it's probably longer than you thought it was going to be but <laughs> I'm bringing the nuance, like I'm just doing it. <laughs> we do have you on record saying that you're marrying the Sarms, though. So big Sarms guy. We, we got the yeah, sound clip yeah. we were after here. I don't, yeah, I don't work for Big Farm. I work for Big Sarms. That's a, yeah, I'm waiting for my check. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, are you a Costco shopper at all? Like, do you ever go to Costco? Do you have a yeah. Costco membership? Yeah. Do you f- ever ever get anything from the food court there at Costco? You know, the, pre, the food the, that they make there that you... The pizza. Yeah, I get a slice of pizza every time I go in there. That's the it. It's not great to be clear. This is not like wow, this pizza is high quality, but it's cheap, and it's it's uncanny. It's it's so similar every single time. I'm like, these guys don't miss. It's a five every single time. Like it's not. You don't go in there. Wow, this is a one today, and you go in there. It's a ten the other day. It's a five every single time. And I just yeah, I don't know how they do that. That's impressive. Are you no, a hot we, dog? You're hot dog guys? Well, no, just no, hold no. On here, hold on. No, okay. we are uh, very much on record as we're chicken bake advocates. Have you ever Whoa. had the chicken bake? No. Uh, there's some in, and there's interesting uh, talk. Do you know uh, the slice of cheese pizza, for example? If you get the slice of cheese pizza, do you know what the anything about the macro breakdown on that? No, don't ruin this for me. No. Oh, the this slice is of be cheese an pizza is listed experience. at 44 grams of protein. <laughs> see that's why i was drawn to it i could smell yeah. the protein on it yeah yeah and so the costco chicken bake which we often talk about when we talk about the macro breakdown it's uh about 800 calories okay. with uh i see i have conflicting information here but about 50 grams of protein okay. 80 grams of carbs and 25 grams of fat in that so what do you think free workout yeah 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 <laughs> i mean i i think i was 800 calories if you did that you know four times a day that's you know 3200 calories yeah. so for most folks over the you know 200 pound mark or so that you probably puts you at energy balance or, or thereabouts i could think of worse worse <laughs> things to eat for sure but that amount of protein is pretty impressive i wouldn't have expected that and i would have expected the fat content to be higher but i i think if it's so if you did it, let's say four times a day and you said it's 25 grams of fat yeah 26 is the one i was looking 26. at right there All right, yeah. so let's say it's 100 grams total per day you're getting in and let's even say uh half of each of those things is saturated fat well so now you're getting into that you know 50 grams is that 10 percent of your total daily calories that puts you at 450 calories yeah it's a little bit high but i i don't know that doesn't sound that bad i guess i would wonder like where are all the freaking carbs coming from what what is the bake part of the chicken it's the 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 bread. It's like a oh, is there yeah, bread like around it? Yeah, I've never even type. seen it. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, it looks like a yeah, it's like yeah, a like chicken a, calzone type. Looks thing. like a big hot pocket almost. Yeah, yeah. Go, oh, yeah. okay. So, well, here's the question: So, after you eat it, what is the time from you finish the chicken bake? Because you guys, you strike me as clean plate guys. Like you just you eat them. You, I'm very well, much yeah. You don't plate. you don't let yeah, the chicken yeah, bake right, go to waste. Right. Yeah. What is the time from the final bite? to hitting the toilet like what's what's the interval there you know I mean anything it's, yeah. it's actually not too bad it actually not correlated it's actually <laughs> okay. I, I i could think i could actually create a much bigger list of food that doesn't sit well like the chicken so there you towards yeah, the yeah, top yeah, yeah, yeah. there's yeah. your pre-workout meal then yeah. you're fine yeah. i just was yeah. wondering i was like look if you got 30 minutes to find a can like that may yeah not no that's, so that's well, never been a problem yeah. for me and i, I won't okay. say i have an iron stomach by any means 
<laughs> yeah, some of those some of the foods that people prefer the most are they in general are super high <laughs> in added sugars, added fats, and added sodium because that's like the oh the I forgot high. to tell you the sodium <laughs> oh, uh, content in that thing. What is it like twenty? I think twenty five hundred milligrams. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So it's your whole yeah. So maybe don't eat that four times a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Four x the, the the current guidelines. Yeah. Although, although the I think the last time I checked the current average sodium intake in the United States is like thirty six hundred milligrams per day. Uh, it's like 96% of people, you know, of adults eat that or more uh, per day. And the guidelines are 2,400, 2,500 milligrams per day. And so it's like, yeah, maybe you wouldn't want to eat that four times a day. So that's, you're getting all of your sodium in one, uh, in one, in one meal. That's so bad. <laughs> it's efficient. Just knocking yeah, it out. <laughs> it is efficient, but I'm checking I, the box. I, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, but like, so if you had it, what other people would eat normally added sugar, added fat, added sodium. Those are like super tasty things. People in general, it's not going to have that much protein. It's going to have a much higher carbohydrate co- count and the fat content is usually going to be through the roof. People are like, oh yeah, I just had this big piece of cake and, or cinnamon roll or something, you know, super, super tasty. And it's like, yeah, the fat content was like 60 grams or something like that. And like, I had to go to the bathroom right afterwards. It's like, yeah, that amount of fat in a meal, high mm-hmm. amount of fat tends to cause this condition called gastric dumping, which is exactly <laughs> what it sounds like. Your stomach goes, I want no part of this. And then yeah. it ends up in your small intestine and your small intestine goes, I don't want any part of this either. And then you're like, I need to find a bathroom now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the macros seem friendly. I, look, if they could do a low sodium version. Oh, mm, they might be onto something there. That's, yeah, that's doable right. too, yeah. Yeah, where, uh, I wonder where all the sodium comes from. Mm. Is it like super seasoned? Is this like AFC? I, it's like, like, like I mean, it's kind of Caesar, in sort of a yeah, Caesar, Caesar dressing type inside sauce. of it. And, yeah. yeah. I'm oh, guessing uh, that's where it's all at. I don't know. Look, I'm going to tag you. The next time I go to Costco, I'm getting the chicken yep. bake. Yeah, please tag us. Yep. Everyone, will, everyone will greatly. We've done. We've put out a lot of chicken bake content up to this point. Uh, <laughs> You're so. putting people onto the and, chicken bake. And also, right. just a uh, uh, hack. People love it, too. So, like, yeah. if oh. you do... If you do anything related yeah, to the Costco you, yes, food yeah, court, make a video. It'll it. do amazing. Yeah, <laughs> one of one of my one of my favorite uh, pizza places in San Diego is called Tribute Pizza, and it this is an embarrassing story, but I I've been going there for four years. It's my pizza place. Um, I was like, why why is it called Tribute? Every pizza on the menu is a tribute to another pizza place. That's like their best pizza on the menu, and they okay. have what's called a Costco pizza. They make the cheese pizza. <laughs> It's like their version of the cheese okay. Costco pizza, and it's fire. I when I hood, when I had it, I go, yeah, this is like the Costco pizza. Is it better? better. It's, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think it's just an ingredient sort of thing, a freshness right. yeah. maybe thing. But I was like, I was like, this is why I like the Costco pizza so much because I just like it's so good. Yeah. But yeah, it took me four years to realize that every pizza on the menu was actually a tribute to another pizza uh, place's pizza. I feel bad saying that out loud, but it's, it's true nonetheless. Uh, that's, a, that's a clever way to do a business, to be like, oh, we're just going to take everyone else's We're going to rip out hits everyone. Yeah, yeah, right. Do you want the chefs? Like, like yeah, uh, one of the pizzas on there is, uh, their, they call it a burrata pizza, right? And uh, it is a tribute to a pizza place in New York, Brooklyn, New York, called La Industry, right? Look, there's an apostrophe in the name, so you know it's fancy. Mm. But I had that pizza, and I go, it was life changing. It was out of body experience. I was transported to heaven. And then, uh, anyway, I go, I go to tribute a few weeks later, and it's on their menu. And and then I was like, Do you, should I call the chef <laughs> right, in right, Brooklyn right, and right. be like, hey guys, there? Yeah. I don't know if there's some IP stuff yeah. here. Like, there what they do you are, do get them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they didn't call it La industry pizza. They called it a burrata pizza. And I was like, all right, I see what you're doing here. I don't yeah. know if I like it, but this is tasty. Yeah, so. but it's close to me, so I'm going to order it. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, so okay. you two can, you guys can eat pizza and have abs. That's 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 the takeaway. From <laughs> that's this, the so. that's the secret hack. That's the that's hack. all I wanted to know. One weird. All trick. you need is that ATP yep. supplement, and that's <laughs> uh, the extra. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> who? I, I've only seen that from Joe. Uh, that's Joe, i think where the Arizona, reference came yeah. from when uh yeah that is where the reference came from when, that that got suggested in there definitely D- did he take the post down is that i don't know i don't I, know i, I look that hard into that <laughs> okay i yeah. don't know for sure because we got sent that a lot and they were like yeah. yo what's up with atp i'm like it is like important to have sufficient atp levels but i don't know that administering it orally or intravenously and I don't know that you want to be doing that at home anyway, is like <laughs> the hack for athletic performance. I haven't seen that. We've seen it in some medical conditions, but anyway, yes, yeah, so that's an aside. Hey, Joe, if you're listening to this, I like you. We're good friends. Like, I like you still. I just thought it was kind of weird. So <laughs> okay. I feel like I'm going to get hate mail. No. <laughs> I, just no. feel like... uh, I think everyone will appreciate it. It's good. It's good. Uh, it's 
If everyone agreed on everything, they want yeah. People want both sides here. They'd have no podcast. Yeah, exactly, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. if nobody ever had anything that they disagreed with, what would we try and poke at podcast guests about? You know, just would that would not be fun. Hey, remember Uh, that time when you disagreed with Mark Ripito? And like, oh god, here we go. I think we we got we we just scratched like some slight starting strength surface last. Last time we had you on, so we figured we'll just that we put that one to bed already. So yeah, we, that's enough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Now we've got our. Uh, you did play this game last time. Every guest we have on plays this game. It's overrated, underrated. Okay. So we have a special uh, Jordan Feigenbaum set of overrated, underrated topics this time, and we made sure not to repeat any from last time. Had to actually review from last time to make sure because our memory's not that good. It's but been a we while. have a fresh fresh set of topics here so too many chicken uh, bakes yeah yeah we wait <laughs> one too sodium, many our brain to is just dome. like all sodium yeah. right <laughs> well, now it's stirring it's like uh <laughs> season and you have your druthers to elaborate as much or as little you as you'd like on each answer but you just have to remember you can't ride the line you yeah. gotta definitively decide so overrated or underrated the san diego zoo oh uh underrated i think okay it is a it, I come from St. Louis, the St. Louis Zoo. We got a train, a butt ton of, you know, animals that, again, if you live in the Midwest, there's a 0% chance you would ever see otherwise. <laughs> it's clean. It's free to get in, or at least when I oh, lived wow. there, it was free. Yeah, so, like, going to San Diego, and you go, you got to go through the gates, and I think it was, I went there, it was a date, actually. I think it was, like, nice. 50-something dollars for us to both get Ooh, in, and I was like, wow. all yeah. right, San, you know what, yeah. take, but they, there's gondolas there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? The beer, the beer garden That's cool. is excellent they even have cocktails in there as well and uh yeah the uh, animal uh watching in there i mean it's just it's better than st louis zoo and so uh yeah underrated because every time i've been there it's never been packed and so i'm like if it was packed i would say i would go the other way Mm. to get less people to go but yeah if you come to san diego go to the zoo they also have a safari park also it's not in the zoo but it's another at another location and you actually drive through and see even larger animals from like a jeep or whatever it's a pretty cool Pretty cool experience. So, ten out of ten so, would recommend San Diego Zoo. Cool. Worth the price of admission. Okay. Yeah, Keep yeah. Going. Tommy, you've have you ever been or? Uh, not no, been? not San Diego. I've been to San Diego, San Diego twice, but never to the yeah. zoo. Okay. Yeah. Next time, if you find yourself Jones in to do something uh, in the middle I, of the day, n- I now know to add it on the list. I know it's legit. It's either that or brunch. Like you have two choices. So that's that's what you have. Yeah. Is brunch. Okay. Is it San Diego got a good brunch scene? Uh, no, no, I don't. I wouldn't know. Like brunch for straight men who are not in a committed relationship, <laughs> brunch is not like. Oh, we yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm right, just right. saying. Like, yeah. like just think about how many times have you called each other? And, hey, hey, bro, you uh, you want to get brunch? <laughs> yeah, like, just, we just call just that lunch. Like, yeah, hey, right. Like, like, and also like, there's like five other guys, and we're gonna have. Why didn't you just ask like a normal person? Like, <laughs> yeah, let's yeah, just go get yeah, some food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, overrated or underrated? Travis Pastrana. Oh, underrated. I think Pastrana might be one of the best motor, you know, motor sports athletes of all time on a dirt bike in particular, uh, highly underrated as a racer. I mean, you you think about it, he was 16 and then 17 when he won his first national championship, he effectively ushered in freestyle motocross as a real legitimate sort of thing. Dude jumped his bike into the San Francisco, uh, Bay, you know, on the X games and, on top of all of that, so you would think this kid, if anything, he won a championship, invented the sport of freestyle motocross, brought it into the mainstream, like was the original X Games poster child. Dude should be a dick. I, or he should have a big head about it. But no, he's just the same G golly shucks, you mm-hmm. know, kind of guy or whatever. And the dude, he just sends it no matter what it is. Now, you know, he, he rarely rides uh, uh, competitively in either freestyle or racing anymore, but he, he shreds still nonetheless. And uh, if you don't know who Travis Pastrana is, would go on YouTube searching Travis Pastrana highlights. He did a thing on his Instagram. It was like his top 50 moments of all time. First dude do a double backflip on a dirt bike. Um, yeah. It, crazy, crazy talented. I did see this thing where he like, he says he doesn't feel pain. Well, like he, you, you see some of the videos, you're like, this guy can't feel pain after all the things he's been through. <laughs> yeah. Some of the crashes that he's been, just, it's like excite bike, like on steroids. Like, yeah. you're like, how do you, how are you alive right now? And he's just like, well, gee golly, I don't, uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> just, uh, things have been good. He just jumps out of a plane, no parachute, mm-hmm. you know, I hope that, and he's got a Red Bull can. And he goes, oh, hope this does give me wings. And it's <laughs> yeah. like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Underrated. Travis Pastrana, 199 lives forever. I think that's the documentary on him. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Awesome. Now, uh, San Diego's most famous movie, underrated or overrated, Anchorman. Ooh. 
this is gonna hurt some people's feelings. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say overrated as San Diego's you know most popular movie. So one, your guys are completely just ignoring Top Gun. Uh, and the Top okay, Gun. yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's actually a that would be a fair yeah battle and actually. trans transport also excellent flick. Uh, I Anchorman was when it came out was great, but you know San Diego's been in a bunch of cool stuff. So yeah, it's it's a great movie. If you guys love Anchorman, I'm happy for you, but eh. Okay, so this this is not an official. This is not the official fourth question, but this is just a a, a sub question of that one. Um, okay. Will Ferrell, <laughs> yes or no? Yeah, just yes or no. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, okay. yes. Okay, fan yeah. of Will fan, fan of Will Ferrell. Uh, but I I do think there was like a weird po- uh, point in his career where it's like. Are, wait, are you still funny? Like, do we think <laughs> yes. you're funny? And then yes. like, I think he got over whatever he was going through. And then, the, okay, oh, yeah, you are funny. All right. He was enough. working yeah. through some stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. He's workshopping yeah. it, but Anchorman. Eh. Okay. 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 Yeah. But you are a Will Ferrell fan. I am. Yes. Okay. I will uh, answer in the affirmative. That on yes. record. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. All right. Last one worth all the marbles overrated or underrated. Uh, the Dodge Viper. Oh, underrated okay so ch- if you guys don't know this i i am uh i'm a gearhead anything with wheels it can go fast i'm a fan of from as something as small as like my i have an electric skateboard that i've changed the mo- uh the battery pack in so now it'll do 45 miles an hour which is <laughs> really ter- dangerous that's very it's fast dangerous in addition <laughs> yeah exactly and you don't realize that that is a far too high a rate of speed until you get up to that and you're like what do i hold on to and then you realize you're on a skateboard <laughs> literally not about this before yeah, yeah it's dumb um so anything on wheels, motor, I'm a big fan of dirt bikes, motorcycles, cars. So the Dodge Viper, I, I picked one up uh, as a last model year. They only made them from 1993 to 2017. And to put this in perspective as to how rare they are, they made just under 27,000 total under that whole run wow. from 93 to 2017. Every year, Chevy makes 30 to 35,000 Corvettes. So mm-hmm. you can see Corvettes everywhere. You never see Vipers. The Dodge Viper is a dinosaur. It's analog AF. It's a six speed rear wheel drive, very little like dummy controls, like the traction control. They put it on there, I feel like, for, for some sort of safety regulation. That shit doesn't work. The, the stability <laughs> control, I'm not, I feel like it's just a switch on there, but again, does nothing. Uh, and you sit inches away from the windshield. It's it's effectively Cheryl uh, uh, or Carol Shelby's reiteration of the Shelby Cobra. So he effectively named it the Viper, another snake name. It's got from the factory 650 horsepower, 650 pound feet of torque. It's an 8.4 liter V10. I love it. It's it is the dumbest vehicle I've ever <laughs> been inside. It is absolutely it is not faster than other cars I've had before, but it's the most fun to drive by far. And and here's the most important part. Just the same reason why we do powerlifting. Dudes love it. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yes. Because like uh, you're you're you said you're 38. I'm 36, and there's something about a Dodge Viper. Oh, that was you know that, that was always. I mean, when I was a kid, like that felt like that was the car. That you know, was the was, pinnacle. Totally. Because like, you did, you would, you'd car. see Corvettes around. Like everyone, everyone's dad had a friend that had a Corvette or something. But like, only there was only like a, a guy that had a Viper, <laughs> if anything. And it was like, whoa, yeah. a Viper. That's crazy. I have the so I have a 2017 Dodge Viper. It's called a Time Attack. So it was like they have the ACR, which is like their Insane. American club racer. Yeah, the wing on the ACR yeah. is like seven foot wide on the back. I'm like, I don't need a barbell length. Spoiler on yeah. my car. People already think I'm a douchebag. Like enough. Like I don't need to like give them more, more, more fuel here. So I got, the, I got the, time, I got the time attack. But it is absolutely insane. And again, dudes, anytime I take it anywhere, there's guys taking pictures of it. Whatever. If I have to valet it, guys are like, the the valet is like, oh my god, this is my dream car. I'm like, me too. That's why. That's why I got this thing. <laughs> and, and when I got it, it was relatively affordable. Although they are kind of going up in value, which is interesting. The funniest story I have about the Viper, it has side exhaust, right? And on the year that I have, it's kind of, you can't tell that it's an exhaust pipe. The only reason you would know that it's an exhaust on the side is if you owned the car and were like into it. So I did not tell this particular woman that, hey, watch your step when you're getting mm. out because there's an exhaust pipe. I just figured she would figure it out like, oh yeah, this it, exhaust sounds like it's like right by right, my right. leg. She swung her legs out and then I hear a shriek. And now she'll remember me forever because she burned her leg and there's a, you know, exhaust mm-hmm. pipe size burn on her calf. I'm sure it'll get better. Uh, but it's, it's like the, the, you know, the burn marks you get when people ride motorcycles for the first time. It's just, yep. it happened to be on a date 
and I felt really bad about that. <laughs> so if you happen to get a Viper, if you listen to this, you're on the fence about it, get it, but make sure you tell people like, hey, watch your leg, watch your step. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's cool. Does does the heat? Do you feel that? Does the heat from that get up into the cabin too? Is that is that a thing? Yeah, so it is very hot inside there. I took it out. There's a local racetrack called Chuckwalla, um, which is really the only place you can open up a car like that. I've taken it to autocross before. It's a terrible autocross car because it's just so big and powerful and whatever. But on the at Chuckwalla, you can you know flat out get it the top of fourth gear. You're going you know 140 miles an hour or whatever down the back straight, and it sounds insane. But it is so hot in there even with the ac's blasting full you know full full speed mm -hmm. and you're you're i'm just sweating profusely and the worst part you're in a helmet and the helmet hits the roof even though it's got a bubble roof and i'm not tall i'm 510 uh it yeah everything like the motor is so close to you the exhaust is right underneath you it's just inside it's like it's just a, a heater yeah. effectively so in san diego you can roll around with the windows down everything's usually fine but uh, yeah if you're in the desert at a racetrack boy i didn't I should have brought I should have brought a camelback to like go around the track in because I I was losing a lot of, a lot of fluid yeah <laughs> uh, and that and that thing yeah but I can fit golf clubs in it oh it can, I can oh it. yeah so it's, it's practical trunk. surprisingly practical <laughs> yeah it's a really practical vehicle yeah. <laughs> the, yeah the car I had before was the Audi R8 or whatever mm -hmm. I thought that was my dream car okay that thing eh. yes okay so what's yeah what's your opinion comparing the two then. Yeah, the uh, the R8 had a V10 plus, so mm -hmm. it was another V10. They didn't and make all wheel drive, manual. right? All wheel yeah. drive. It is one of those. It's like it's it's dummy. It's dummy proof. Mm -hmm. You can mash on the gas, go crazy, and you're not going to get out of control because all wheel drive. And again, it's just so highly tuned that it's really hard to get out of control. So if I was just trying to go fast, particularly on a racetrack, that would be the pick comparatively. But the fun factor, Viper all day, yeah. and the R8 doesn't have a trunk. Cause the motor's in the back. Mm, All you right. have, we have a frunk mm -hmm. that you can fit like a carry on bag, maybe two bags of groceries. And if I was going to go play golf, I had to put golf clubs in the passenger seat. It's kind of a weird sort of thing, but in the Viper, I got golf clubs in the back. I got my gym bag in the back or whatever. Dudes mm -hmm. admiring me. I mean, come on. Like, yeah. it's just, what it's more not, could a guy want in life? That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> you, you, you pull up in the R8 and uh gearheads are going to be like, Oh, He's got a, you know, they're going to know the car. They're going to be like, this is awesome. I want to check it out. And other people are going to look at it and be like, oh, that looks like a nice car. But you pull up in the Dodge Viper, every person that has a pulse is going to be like, okay, what's, what's, that's a Dodge Viper. Yes. Right? Yeah. And know, also, like, also the stigma is like some people might see an R8 and they're like, oh, it's an Audi. This guy's like, he's kind of douchey. He's just some totally. guy with money. He doesn't get cars. And yeah. then you pull up in a Viper and no one like accidentally gets a Viper, you know? No, like, like you oh gotta, yeah, you I just gotta, picked this car. It's, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, I just randomly picked out a 2017. But like, if you have a Viper, people are like, okay, that's a car guy. Yeah, he's you know, he gets it. Yeah. 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 I realized that my potential to douche, my PTD, if you will, <laughs> is like very hot, right? Like I, I get that I'm more my trajectory could go. So I have good insight into the problem. So I'm yeah. constantly trying to disarm people. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not me. I'm yeah. actually a nice guy from very humble beginnings. Um, really just trying to help people, but I do love cars. And yeah. so when I was driving around the in the Audi, I was like, kind of felt like a poser. I'm like, I am not like a rich guy. I, I don't identify as like bougie or fancy into this level. I, I don't really know what I'm doing. I just thought it was, I saw, I saw Iron Man oh, and I was well, like, and I'll be the first to admit I've Audis. I would have like, I'd love an R8 or RS6 that like the Avant. Yeah. I think those are like the, two of the coolest cars amazing. out there. I think they're amazing. Amazing. But. <laughs> yeah. I will say though, at full tilt, like the Audi R8, I think redlined at like 83 or 8,400 Things screams. It was a five point, I believe it was a 5.7 liter V10. But the Viper 8.4 liter V10, mm -hmm. yeah, that thing so, redlines like 64. <laughs> Dude, it's and the side pipes, it's just, yeah. it's obnoxious. Again, anything dumb that you could do to a car to make it completely obscene, Dodge was like, they yeah, let's it. do that. Yeah. Their first one they made had plastic windows. Yeah, did it, it actually didn't it, have, I don't think, did it not have door handles was the only way to get in. Door was door handles. Just, you re reach your hand over and. <laughs> yeah, no door handles, no AC, no radio. They're like, Dudes are gonna love this, <laughs> yeah. and it's true. They bought them. Still, they were like, ah, "I don't need this. It's totally fine." <laughs> so the last, the last edition, which is what I have, is is a little bit more practical. Um, but yeah, compared to the R8, the R8 was cool. If I wanted to cruise up the PCH, I could have done that. I can't do that in the Viper. I'd have, I'd end up with ten herniated discs, you know, driving up in the in the Viper. But uh, yeah, that is, I'm never getting rid of this car. Never. I I think this thing's cool. Uh, if anything, I would get an old muscle car that's like kind of having driven now this what i call the dinosaur the next car that i might get 
I'll probably build it with my dad, just like we did my, my first car. It'd be something like a first gen Camaro or Mustang or like e-body Mopar or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just cause again, I like the experience of feeling like I'm connected to the car and not like, wow, all these gadgets are making me go fast. <laughs> like I've, have you guys been in a Tesla, a plaid? I never have. No, uh, no, no. If you look, here's, here's what you should really, this should be the, the test of the chicken bake. Eat a chicken bake, <laughs> get in a Tesla plaid, plaid yeah. and then have Launch somebody it. do a few launches yeah. and just yeah. see like and what see, happens. See if you can hold it down or where <laughs> it goes. Yeah. They are obscenely fast in a straight line, but like it's just otherworldly. And it's certainly faster than the Viper in a, in a straight line, but the experience of driving it is it, you can't compare them again, shifting, I have a manual steering rack that can't, it comes in the Viper, the sounds, mm -hmm. the smells, you just don't get that in a, in an electric car, despite how fast it is. And it's like, yeah, speed is one thing, but at some point eh, it's fast enough. You just want to, you want the driving experience to be there. Right. Mm -hmm. Not that uh, look, this, this isn't a car podcast, but like <laughs> oh, people might like this. I don't know. Yeah, no, oh, it's, yeah, they will. Yeah. it's fun. <laughs> And I, I totally could uh, probably re relate to, you know, I'm kind of a motorcycle guy, a Harley Davidson guy, and it would be, you know, if I was driving around on an electric e-bike, it would not feel the same, yeah. same thing, you know, it just is different. That's what's happening in motocross now. So there's been some e-bike, uh, electric bikes that are like coming into the fray and people are like, what's going to happen? Cause like part of the, like dirt bikes, you get to work on them. You, For sure. Used to be two strokes, yeah. you get to mix the gas, you smell the race gas or whatever. Yeah. And now all you hear is the chain slap on these electric bikes and they're like, yeah, but it's faster and you don't have to shift. And you're like, whatever. And it's like, you're missing the point. And also if the you don't have to shift, that's like, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. That's the, it's a part that, of it. Yeah. It's a, right. Right. Yeah. So that's the whole thing. People are like, should we allow electric motorcycles to race in the, you know, internal combustion engine class? Cause it's different. There's no clutch. You don't right. shift. You just turn the throttle and go. And it's like, <laughs> I get, I mean, look, anything on two wheels with the motor that goes, I'm like, I'm interested in, but as far as like, if I got to choose the experience, it would be the more analog version, less tech, more old school. And it just, I don't know. It's just more fun. Even if I am not going quite as fast, if that makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. um, good news. It looks like you passed overrated and underrated again. So you've yeah. got two, <laughs> two under your belt now, med school and two over unders, uh, both a week both of PR great accomplishment. Great that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and I had uh, a very bad performance on supplements, real or fake. So I feel uh, <laughs> you may and totally redeemed yourself. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, so congratulations there. Also, I think uh, when we had you on the first time, it must have been in the year 2021. And we did a recap of podcast episodes and you were very high mm, for yes. our uh, number of listens that year. So we'll see how this shakes out. So, yeah, you, like uh, we have some high expectations here. So do not let us down. Yeah, I was number two uh, to Jim Wendler, which I don't know. I, so Jim yeah. was number one. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I thought maybe you edged him out. Are you sure that he edged? I yes, because people people brought this to my attention. They're <laughs> right, like, you know who's number one? A right? funny, yeah, like, quite the funny. Uh, co nah, maybe not coincidence, but just uh, the funny that one and two right there. And I, we even talked about. We even uh, broached that subject a little bit that first time around, I think, That's too. That's right. So, yeah, people are yeah. like, five through one, beat you again. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> you guys got me. You guys, I'm trying to live north of the badge over here. And I'm yeah. <laughs> we have Now we have to get Jim on again here before the end of 2023. <laughs> we'll so just we have can him have on a, next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jim, so we got this Jordan guy on there. We got to really see if you, who can outperform the other. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we'll pit everyone else against each other for our own, own hopeful gain. Yeah. That's right, yeah. No, awesome. Uh, we really appreciate having you on. This was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Is there anything, uh, you know, we talked about barbell medicine, um, but specifically if someone has questions or wants to find you, what do they do? Yeah, you search, you uh, go into Google, the Google machine, you type in barbell medicine, you'll end up either at a website, a podcast, YouTube channel, Instagram, uh, TikTok. Look, we're on all of it. So if uh, you want to reach us, there are multiple avenues to do so, and we're pretty active on all social media platforms. And we'd love to love to answer some questions or help you out. Or if you just want to talk shit, that's fine too. Like we're here for that too. So yeah, a uh, quick plug on that. I know we've had several supporting members over the years that have uh, uh, vouched for like rehab stuff that they've done with you that they've really enjoyed. So check that out if you're uh, in the need, which a lot of us are at times. And uh, yeah, we just we just really appreciate it. This is good stuff. Are yeah. you going to be at the Arnold again in 2024, March 2024? That'll be my uh, 11th time at the Arnold. I will be there, awesome. and uh, I will uh, come grab a beer with you guys or uh, bro down. Perfect. Uh, always looking forward to see my homies at uh, Massonomics, and thanks for having me on the podcast. I appreciate it, guys. We'll have, we'll have a chicken bake waiting for you. 
Oh my god, yes. <laughs> Let's do it. Chicken bake pull, eating contest. Pull up I'm in dead. the Viper and we'll all get in there with <laughs> yeah, a bag of chicken bakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get Sounds in, great. we're getting chicken bakes. <laughs> Let's go, losers. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks, Jordan. Right. Yep, see you guys. Cool beans. Cool, cool beans. Beans. Cool beans. There it is. You gave him the uh V10 cool bean. We're after there, after we get the well before we get the chicken bakes, we're getting the Costco cool beans. You know, we're loading uh, up yeah. on them. Getting getting the cool beans loaded. Have uh how did you notice my any of my any internet performance performance issues on my end throughout the interview at all? No, or both, all good both were good all the way through for me. Oh, right, it did a did a couple wacky things a couple times, but it, the timing worked out perfect. Where Jordan was talking about something long enough, where it froze, <laughs> and, and then, then it caught up. all back up. And still, when he was talking, and every time it was like just about when he was done talking, it was caught back up, oh. and I heard the whole thing just in like a speedy version of it. I, and uh, I never noticed a delay or anything. Actually, you know, I'll just talk about on the podcast too. They screwed with our internet. They did something. You know, I used to have. Oh, for, yeah, you did for, say that for yeah. tech. You know, uh, people. There's probably some people listening that are work on this sort of thing or in the space some, that they're very well versed on it. out there. Yeah, some technically a guy sort of people <laughs> that uh, would know. But my internet used to be my Wi-Fi, where I could select the five G version you, you or had select a dual the, band router. Right? Yeah, a dual yeah. band router, and we still have the same router, but they changed something. They updated something in the wherever that gets updated. That now. Both bands exist, but you can't manually select which band mm-hmm. you're connecting through through a device. They say, you know, the device if it's five G, it's gonna it it's knows. gonna connect to yeah. the five G, and we can no longer select it. But coincidentally, or maybe not coincidentally, maybe cause after this, like it's well, I figured out what's happening here, and this was an issue before we started, and it's like the internet's just like ticking off for like a couple oh. seconds. Ra- you know, at random intervals, and so, then like it's not like kicking off in the sense that I'm getting disconnected from yeah, Zoom. Yeah, it's just like it's jumping just, to like the wrong band and sucking right. for a moment. Yeah, um, something like that. I don't know. So. so that's actually I totally forgot about that. That's very interesting. You brought that up because we both use the same internet provider, right? And um, when I left the town home to the note to the new home, we both had the same modem router all in one thing. Right. I brought it over. And I'm like, oh, did I need to bring this? And the guy goes, no, you don't need that. You're going to get something new. But I guess this makes it easy. I can take it from here. And yeah. what he did is I now have this mesh network in my house, and it's the same thing. Okay. I don't have – I don't get to pick, you know, the, the So 2. you don't 4. have that either. Okay. Yeah, I don't get to pick the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz. Yeah, but I do have these mesh, these pods throughout my house to, to okay. blanket it better. So, I, I mean, I okay. do have good coverage throughout the house, but – well, and and my speed is really good. It's just like, it's almost just like, it's just like kicking, just off clicking for away for short yeah. periods of time, you know? Uh, but I do think what I'm going to do, not that the Wi-Fi has really been an issue at all over our, all of our recording here, but uh, I do think I'm going to actually, I th- thought about it before. I'm just going to have them, you know, hardwire, hire, hardwire this yeah. thing in because I've got a, I've got a wall. Uh, that is the way to do it. You got the jack there. Yeah. Let yeah. Go, and I just. Hardwire and just let the speed run through me. That's <laughs> just pure, unadulterated speed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it is funny how, how I guess it's not as funny, but just, um, you know, how proficient Wi-Fi has gotten that you mm-hmm. don't even really think about really wiring anything in ever. You no. know, like, what's the point? Yeah, I mean, but the point, still, you that still being said, that more. still has issues sometimes. You know, like, all Wi-Fi is, it's not a perfect yeah, it's not I, a perfect system. I mean, I'm on gig and I'm on Wi-Fi just because of convenience, and I get yeah. nowhere near gig speeds. I don't even get right. 500 meg on right on Wi-Fi. But well, and I think that's when I upgraded. I think that's what was is that. I think that's what mine is too now, isn't it? And I you get like 350. A, yeah, on I can't wifi, remember if you're a five. You know. The only reason I went to it's gig is because they had some promotion, yeah. so it was like four dollars more a month. I'm like, oh, I'll just do that for now and. Right. Whenever that ends, right. I'll probably switch it back to the lower. Yeah, level. maybe I'm on 500 then yeah. is what I'm actually on, but you don't get that actually, do you? You get like yeah, you're never quite there. No, a watered down version of that. Uh, Big Jordan, good good interview there. That was yeah. fun though, wasn't it? Yeah, yep. He's always got a uh, <laughs> lots of fun insights, good things to he say. He does. He does good stuff. You know what else? Uh, speaking of good insights, and we talked about a little supplement action in there. It got me thinking while we were talking about that. It got me thinking about build fast formula. Are you tired of supplements that just don't work? 
you take them, you wait a few minutes, maybe an hour or two, you don't feel anything. Most supplements are underdose, contain fillers, cost cutting com- compounds, and the thing that I dislike the most, the proprietary blends. Those are in there. They mask an inconvenient truth a lot of times if their supplements don't work. Well, maybe maybe it's not your fault. Maybe you just need to check out uh, s- some supplements that are come from right here in the Dakotas from our friends down the road in Watertown, South, South Dakota at Build Fast Formula. Uh, check out their supplements on their website. It's buildfastformula.com. One of my favorite parts is you can use discount code Massonomics. It'll save you 10% on everything you buy there on your order. You can get the Vaso Blitz, which conveniently is just sitting right here. I, I, you know I always keep that thing on yeah. me, the Vaso Blitz. Uh, pre-workout, 80-20 protein. I use that every day. Uh, discount code Massonomics. You sign up for, a, let's see, a subscription model. You get another 10% off. So you stack the 10 on the 10, 20% off. Thanks, Build Fast. And today's episode is also brought to you by Barefoot Shoes and their latest collaboration with Massonomics, the Ursonomics, a splicing of suede and canvas, something that they've never seen before. It combines the strength, durability, and comfort of suede with the lightweight and breathability of canvas for a shoe that sits at the top of the food chain. It's wide, flat physique offers a stable tanner just so seductively moving in front of the camera. I almost can't concentrate. It's just, that's all I can look at. It's wide, flat physique offers a stable podium for your powerful paws. While it's flexible nature promotes a gait as natural as a bear prowling the Western Northeast South Dakota wilderness. Reserve your pair of ergonomic shoes now at barefoot.store. There's only 250 available. That was actually where it started. It's significantly lower than that now. I we're think down there's to like the, 50 available. Yeah, we're down to the final stretch. So there's only about 50 left. So if you were on the fence, you're going to want to go and order those now. Orders will be shipping soon. So you hopefully don't have to wait much longer. Uh, and while you're there, make sure to use code MASS. Yes. Yes, use code MASS. Use code MASS. Throw a pair of awesome wraps in your cart, and you'll get the wraps for free. Once again, throw the awesome wraps in your cart. Use code MASS, and you'll get the wraps for free with the purchase of your very own Ursonomics. Thank you, Barefoot Shoes. Thanks, Barefoot Shoes. Oh, do we need to hit anything else this episode, Tommy, or should we wrap this wrap this um, puppy up? I mean, I think we hit it and quit it. I think we're done here. Hit it and quit it. That's what I've always said. <laughs> So check out our website too. As long as you're checking all this stuff out, massonomics.com, that's where you can sign up to become a supporting member. You can, uh, if you're a supporting member, you can sign up for our crew falls, December to remember meetup event in Sioux Falls, South Dakota on December 9th. Uh, more information coming on the lift hard, live easy classic, both July 20th, both, both items there, two of the hottest tourist destinations in South Dakota. Absolutely. Growing, growing by the year, just getting bigger and better all the time. And then, uh, Check out our website, uh, our merchandise that we've got for sale. You know, our tees, hoodies for hoodie season, our uh, windbreakers for windbreaker season. We've got drink uh, spotters. Left, we've got drink spotters for drink spotter season. We which got shorts for these any are always season. in season. Yep. So support us any way you'd like. We appreciate any and all of it. Tommy, where do they find you at? You can find me at Tomahawk underscore D. You can follow me at uh, Tanner underscore Baird, but please, for the love of God, just make sure to follow Massonomics at Massonomics and make sure to check out our YouTube channel. That's been our fastest growing uh, social media that's going on. Massonomics on YouTube, new videos mostly every week, a bunch of good stuff out there. We just had some really, really popular videos. More coming every week. Check it out. Big things coming.